It's about 20 seconds, so I'll let you know when we're live. It's no problem, my friend. About 20 seconds, so I'll let you know when we're live. Hey, guys, we are live and we're in the house. Glory to our triumph God. Praise be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Son of God lives. We love you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over. Anoint this session. Anoint Brother Rob Christian and bless the people. Expose the lies of Islam and bring Muslims to the feet of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we love you, Father, Son, and Spirit. We got a special guest. We got Rob Christian. And he's not what's up? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> and you're not called Rob Christian because you rob Christians. No, 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 no. I uh, I love to rob Muslims uh, to Amen. come back home to Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, guys, you know how the format works. I'm going to give our brother as much time as he deems fit. He's going to introduce himself, his ministry, his YouTube. <clears throat> and so once he gives you that information, God willing, I'll have links to his YouTube channel in the description box. But make sure if you're not a subscriber, you subscribe, watch his videos. And I don't just say it to say it. The man has been blessed. He knows Arabic. He knows the sources. He knows the truth of Islam. And glory to Jesus Christ, you're going to be blessed because he's going to prove Muslims worship Muhammad and the black stone. So my brother, I'm going to pull back, give you the screen, and bring up your screen as well. Christ is risen. May he bless you. Thank you. Thank you for this amazing opportunity. Thanks to the Lord that we can be here and uh, do a nice collaboration together. Uh, I want to uh, ask our Lord and Savior to bless you, your daughters, uh, Brother Sam, and our audience who are watching. And uh, Lord willing, uh, also the Muslims will benefit from today's live show. And they can leave Muhammad, drop him. Drop Islam and come back home to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, God bless everyone who is here. Uh, thank you again, uh, Brother Sam, for giving me this opportunity, this blessing to be with you here. And uh, let us do this. Now, um, I see that the screen is already uh, shared. So that's amazing. That's perfect. Uh, today's topic is how and why Muslims worship Muhammad and the Black Stone. And as you see here, this is a hadith that you can see on the screen with me. Let us read it. This is Sunan and Isai. Sunan and Isai, hadith number 2919. 2919. Maybe the admins can share uh, the link uh, to this hadith. We can read the following. Oh, Abu Abdul Rahman, why do you... I only see you touching these two corners. Well, what are those two corners? Those are the corners of the Kaaba. The Kaaba. So the Yemeni corner and the corner where the black stone has been etched, attached to. So he said, now here's the response. I heard the messenger of Allah saying, so here Muhammad is the one talking, touching them, those two corners, the Yemeni corner and the black stone corner, Erases sins. But wait a second. Muslims always tell us that Allah is the one who can forgive sins. But it seems that the Kaaba, and in this case, the two corners of the Kaaba, can erase sins. So how is this not idolatry? How is this not sin? And uh, it continues saying, and I had her, and I had him say, whoever uh, circle the Kaaba seven times, it's like freeing a slave. So how is this not idolatry, uh, Brother Sa uh, Sam Shamoun? And I need your help, uh, Brother. Can you hear me? Sam, can you hear me? Of course. But when I pull back, you won't hear me. Okay. Uh, I have a question for you, Sam. Now, Sam, I need your help and knowledge on this very uh, following question. When we ask Muslims, hey, Muslims, why do you bow down towards the Kaaba and the Black Stone? Isn't that pagan? Isn't that idolatry? Mm -hmm. Now, nine out of ten times, their answer will be, well, the Jews used to bow down towards the temple. Why yeah. can't we bow down towards the Kaaba and the Black Stone? So, Sam, yeah. what's your refutation for this very, very <clears throat> silly argument of the Mohammedans? Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question because they bring it up. And Lord willing, I'll give links to the articles where I address this. The difference is, if you guys know your Bible, <clears throat> if you know your Hebrew scriptures... If you go and read Exodus chapter 40, 
verses 34 to 38. Exodus chapter 40, verses 34 to 38. So write these down. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 12 to 13. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 12 to 13. Second Chronicles, write these down, folks. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. And then finally, Matthew chapter 23, <clears throat> verse 21. Matthew 23, 21. God told Israel that in the temple, he would dwell in that place. His presence would be there in a special, unique manner. His name would be there. So when they're bowing to the temple, it's not the building. It's because they know God dwells there in a unique <clears throat> manner. He has localized his presence in a unique way without ceasing to be omnipresent. So they knew that God's presence was truly there. So they were worshiping the God who lives there. That's why. Perfect, perfect. So uh, they basically their argument is nothing but a silly argument because our God used to or, or used to... Uh, dwell in the temple right so we or in this case sorry the jews when they bow down they bow down towards the lord who is uh dwelling in the temple but muslims they always say that allah is outside his creation so are so they are basically only bowing to an empty black box and uh, where the black stone is etched to so that means there. this is nothing but paganism. This is nothing but idolatry. And it's nothing but a silly argument that has nothing to do uh, with the Jews. The Jews are uh, far, far from this. They are free from this idolatry. So let us continue. So we just explained to you how Muslims actually bow down uh, towards a black stone. They kiss and touch the two corners which is nothing but idolatry. This proves that Muslims actually do worship the black stone and they worship the Kaaba because why would you touch the black stone and the Yemeni corner if it's not idolatry? Because it says clearly in the Hadith, touching them erases sins. Touching them erases sins. This is pure idolatry. This is paganism. If we go to the next hadith, we can see the following. Now, here is also why Muhammad hated the Jews. This is why Muhammad wanted to expel and get rid of all the Jews in the Arabic, uh, Arabic Peninsula, the Hijaz, as they called it. This is also Sunan and Nisa'i, Sunan and Nisa'i, hadith number 3773, 3773, Sunan and Nisa'i. We can read the following. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Yas, Yasar from Qutayla, a woman from such and such, that a Jew, watch, that a Jew came to the Prophet and said, now see how this Jew is going to bust Muhammad and proves to Muhammad and the Sahaba that Muhammad is nothing but a pagan, a nice little pagan fake prophet, a pagan prophet. Watch. Now, the Jew came to the Prophet and said, watch, watch what the Jew is going to say. You, Muhammad, you are setting up rivals to Allah. Now, you see here, they put to Allah between brackets. That's not what the Arabic says. So, when you ever you say words between brackets, that means it's added. It's not in the Arabic. You, Muhammad, are setting up rivals and associating others with him. So, you are a mushrik, Muhammad, according to the Jew. You are a mushrik. You associate partners with Allah. So do you see how the Jew busted Muhammad? Now here, let us continue. Let's see what it says more. You, Muhammad, say whatever Allah wills and you will. And you say, you, Muhammad, say by the Kaaba. So the prophet changed his mind. Now see how Muhammad changed his mind after getting busted by the Jew. So Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, commanded the Sahaba, commanded them, if they wanted to swear an oath to say, by the Lord of the Kaaba. So first, before he was getting busted by the Jew, it was by the Kaaba. That's what Muhammad used to say. Later, Muhammad changed his mind and said, by the Lord of the Kaaba. That's what you need to say from now on, Muslims. And to say, 
he continues saying whatever Allah wills and then what you will so do you see how Muhammad was a pagan so wait a second here mm -hmm. let's say the Jew did not come to Muhammad to expose him that means Muhammad would have still till today and the Muslims still today would have said by the Kaaba <laughs> if this is not idolatry if this is not shirk, then I don't know the meaning of shirk. I don't know the meaning of idolatry or paganism. So here Muhammad clearly, crystal clear proof that he was nothing but a little pagan, fake prophet. Muhammad has nothing to do with God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Muhammad is a fake prophet. This is crystal clear proof. And this is also why Muhammad hated the Jews. Because the Jews used to expose him and bust him for everybody to see. So do you see how Muhammad changed his mind? From by the Kaaba to by the Lord of the Kaaba. Now I have more. I have more. Now that we prove to you that Muslims are nothing but idolaters, idolaters, and they are nothing but uh, pagans, we're going to go to the Quran and prove to you that Muhammad is also equal with Allah. Equal with who? With Allah. Muhammad is equal with Allah. Watch. Chapter 48, Surah Al-Fatih, Ayah 9. Chapter 48, Surah Al-Fatih, Ayah 9. Now, I'm an Arabic speaker, so let us read the Arabic first and explain to you what the Ayah is saying. Unfortunately, to understand this Ayah, you really need to know Arabic. Watch. لِتُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ what does that mean? That you may believe in Allah. There's nothing called God. This is a false translation. It's Allah because Ilah in Arabic means God. Allah is the name of the Islamic God. We know it's Satan, but hey, let us go with it. So that you may believe in Allah and his messenger who Muhammad and you have to what? Assist him, assist him when and where? In battle. So you have to assist Muhammad in battle and you have to honor or respect him and you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. How is that, Rob? Well, here's why. If you, as an Arabic speaker from the Middle East like me, you went to school, they have taught you in school that the last person, in this case, the Rasul, Muhammad, if he's the last mentioned person in a sentence like this, all the words that you see here highlighted go back to Muhammad again, according to Arabic grammar rules. If the last person is mentioned in a sentence like this, in this case, Muhammad, the messenger, all the words that come after go back to that last person and that last person alone. So you have to assist Muhammad in battle. You have to respect or honor Muhammad. And you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Now, Muslims and Christians who are watching, do you see how Muhammad elevated himself to the same level of Allah? You, it's not enough to worship Muhammad, uh, Allah. You have to also worship Muhammad because remember, to glorify someone, subhan, tasbih, wa tusabbihu, it's all the same, right? It's the same uh, root, it's the same word. Subhan, wa tusabbihu, subhanallah, right? In this case, it's subhan Muhammad. It became subhan Muhammad, not subhanallah. So you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Now, let's say I'm lying, guys. Let's say I'm lying. I'm not lying. I'm an Arabic speaker. You can play those Taqiyya games with me. Let's say Rob Christian is lying. How can we know that it's actually talking about Muhammad? Here's why. If we go to Tafsir al-Qurtubi, who? Tafsir al-Qurtubi for the same chapter, same ayah. Tafsir al-Qurtubi, one of the classical daddies, commentators for the Quran. Al-Qurtubi himself. For chapter 48, ayah 9. Chapter 48, ayah 9. It says, Ibn Abbas, who is Ibn Abbas? The cousin of Muhammad, the cousin of the Prophet. His other nickname is Hubr al Ummah. What does that mean? He's the ink of the Ummah. So when Ibn Abbas explains, you listen and obey. Is 
If Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, explains the Quran, you listen and obey Muslims. What does to assist Muhammad, do you see it? To assist him, what is that first verb? What does that mean? Ibn Abbas says, and I quote, you as a Muslim fight with Muhammad, fight with him with the sword. So the first verb already explains that it's talking about Muhammad, the Rasul. Did you catch it? The Rasul. So in other words, the first verb already explains that it's going back to Muhammad, not to Allah. Right? So you have to assist Muhammad in battle with the sword. You have to respect or honor Muhammad and you have to do tasbih, which is an act of worship, glorification, to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. This is not my tafsir. I have nothing to do with it. This is according to Ibn Abbas, according to the tafsir of Al-Qurtubi for chapter 48, ayah 9. So do you see how important it is to know Arabic and to know the Arabic grammar rules? Right? Even if the Arabic grammar rules are wrong, which they are not, we have still the tafsir of Al-Qurtubi from the mouth of Ibn Abbas who is actually explaining what what tu'azziruhu means what tu'azziruhu means to assist him in battle because remember allah does not need assistance in battle right because muhammad used to go and fight many tribes fight the jews let's say fight the romans aslim wa taslim aslim fa taslim convert or else Muhammad used to say he also sent a letter to the Romans to the Roman Emperor Aslim Fataslim oh, uh, convert or else convert or else so Muhammad needs assistance according to Ibn Abbas you fight with him with the sword with who with Muhammad so all the verbs go back to Muhammad and Muhammad alone so you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening if this is not Blasphemy, if this is not shirk, then I don't know the meaning of these words. Do you see how Muslims have to worship Muhammad, glorify him every morning and evening? Here, Muhammad, without any fear, openly elevated himself and made himself equal with Allah. Bam! Right, Muslims? And to explain it even further, tasbih means glorification to sabbihu to glorify him so tasbih is not only for allah <laughs> as you see it also became for muhammad our acts of worship in islam which are only for allah but here we see that it became also the same act of worship became also possible for muhammad made possible by muhammad and this proves that muhammad wanted to be worshiped like his Allah. What do you want to say about this, uh, Brother Sam, uh, after reading this? I know that you know about this, but can you? Yeah. 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 So, no, actually, I can't add. You are doing perfect, my brother. And I don't just say that. You have mm -hmm. an advantage. You know the Arabic Quran. So, glory to Jesus Christ. And I just want to take a moment again to encourage people. Real quickly, I want you to understand the blessing the believers have in this age. Not only do you have internet and you have all this technology free by the grace of Jesus Christ to use to glorify Jesus Christ, but he's raised up mighty warriors, soldiers of the Lord Jesus, who are exposing <clears throat> the deeds of darkness and the satanic religion. You need to support Rob Christian, Christian Prince, Osama Dakdok. These three giants know the Arabic. So the Muslims can't play games with them, and they're a blessing to the church of Jesus Christ. My brother, you're doing fantastic. Keep destroying Islam because there's not much I can add. How can I help you? I'm your student. You know the language, so I'm learning as well. So keep chipping away at Islam. Glory to Jesus Christ. Come on, man. You get me excited now. <laughs> God bless you, brother. God bless you. Uh, so as you see, we explained to you that Muhammad actually loved to be glorified. Muhammad loved to be glorified by his Sahaba. And this is really damaging. If you are a Muslim and you are sincere with yourself, 
you need to drop Muhammad because Muhammad actually became the real God of Islam here. And actually, I had a long conversation with a Muslim. He called me and he wanted to only talk to me in private about this very ayah that you see here in front of you. He didn't believe me. And he said, Rob Krishna, I really want to uh, talk with you about this. And, uh, but I don't want to do it publicly. I said, okay, no problem. So he called me on uh, my Skype and we had a one hour long conversation. After the conversation, he left and he went to ask his friends. He even went to his imam. And by the way, he was a Sunni Muslim. A week later, he called me back and he said, Rob Christian, I asked all of the Muslims that I could find. I also asked my imam and none of them could give me a clear refutation about this very ayah. So when he called me, he said, Rob Christian, I left Islam because of you. Because I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know Arabic. I, my imam actually never talked about this before. And I never heard anyone about this very ayah. This very ayah is actually one of the biggest nails on the coffin of Muhammad, proving that he is the real God of Islam, elevating himself to the status of Allah. So this gentleman who is sincere about his salvation left Islam. And that was the last time that I spoke to him. So I hope, I hope, hopefully, I, uh, keep this guy in your prayers, guys. I can't mention his name because uh, he didn't want to do it publicly. So I removed that video. I actually recorded, I removed that video uh, because that was his wish. And uh, pray, keep that gentleman in your prayers, guys. Lord willing, he's going to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. So as you see, crystal clear proof from tafsir, from the grammatical rules that we explained to you that all the verbs that come after go back to Muhammad, the Rasul, and only back to the Rasul. So to assist him in battle, to honor or respect him and glorify him every morning and evening. And Ibn Abbas explains it away, what it means to assist him. You fight with Muhammad with the sword in battle because Allah does not need the assistance in battle. Allah is outside of his creation. So if Muslims want to say, you know, uh, assist him means it goes back to Allah. No, no, no. You can't play those games with us because Allah is outside of his creation and we have Ibn Abbas Umma, the ink of the Ummah, right? Who explains the Quran. Muhammad said to his Sahaba, go to Ibn Abbas regarding the tafsir, the commentary about the Quran, of the Quran. So Ibn Abbas is crystal clear. To assist him means it's about Muhammad. And we explain to you that Muslims need to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. So do you see do you see how we just find for you a crystal clear blasphemy in the Quran in chapter 48, ayah 9? Now, Sam, uh, I've, I have another thing to share with you, and you, you know about this. If Muslims pray, if Muslims pray uh, their daily five prayers, they used to say, or they always say, at least 15 times, because they need to repeat it, so at least 15 times they say, Assalamu alayka, ayyuha nabi, wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. That means peace and Allah's mercy and blessing be upon you. Who? You, Prophet of Islam, Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. When you are talking to a guy, a mortal guy like you and me, because that's what Muslims say, Muhammad is a mere man, he's only a prophet. When you pray and you talk to Muhammad directly, Peace be upon you, O Prophet. What does that mean, uh, Sam? Just so, Rob, these yeah. brothers and sisters who don't know Arabic, so that we can hammer that point, sink, sink. So you and me, we get it because we've done this. So you're saying, and I non-Arabic speakers, listen to what he just told you. You're saying Muslims, when they pray five times a day, and the, the five daily prayers, that's the heart of their ibadah, worship. Yes. You're saying, Rob, in their prayer in Arabic, because a lot of Muslims don't even know this, Rob, because you know, you and I know, ah, the noise, sorry. You and I know there are a lot of Muslims who recite the Quran in their prayers. They don't have an idea what they're saying. So, Rob, just help me understand. Five times a day, the Muslims are speaking to Muhammad, 
who's dead and buried in Medina and Arabia. They're saying, peace be upon you, O prophet, five times yes. a day. Yes. In, wait, wait. In their five daily prayers, which is the heart of worship? Yes. So they're talking to a dead man as they talk yes. to Allah in their prayer? Yes. Okay, then that means no, Muslims are not idolaters. They're the purest monotheists on the planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, how is, uh, we just explained to you from chapter 48, ayah 9, that Muhammad made himself equal to Allah. You have to glorify him every morning and evening. If that's not enough, when you are praying, while you are praying as a Muslim, you have to say, As-salamu alayka, ayyuhan nabi, wa rahmatullah, wa barakatuh. Ayyuhan nabi, meaning, you, peace be upon you, O Prophet. You, O Muhammad. But wait, Muhammad is dead. He's buried. 1400 years ago, he's, he's, he was, he's buried in Medina somewhere. So how are you talking to a dead man? Isn't that idolatry? Isn't that shirk? And you Muslims dare to attack us and call us pagans when we say Jesus Christ is the eternal word of God. The name above all names. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. How dare you? Amen. How dare you? So, uh, Sam, uh, I actually uh, wanted to uh, wrap this up. Actually, I uh, sure. short but sweet. I think. What do? Sure. What can we? Uh, yeah, I have add to this. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that you mm -hmm. know Arabic very well, and the Lord Jesus has blessed you. And again, I want to encourage people: <clears throat> pray for him, his family. Pray for the provision. We need more brothers like him doing ministry full time. Not everyone will be given <clears throat> the calling of Jesus to do full-time ministry. You still need to witness. You still need to preach the gospel, but <clears throat> you may not be called to do it full-time. There are a few people we need in full-time ministry. <clears throat> Rob Christian is one of them. Osama Dakdok is one of them. Christian Prince is one of them. Hatun Tash is one of them. Al-Fadi. If I would encourage you to support ministries, there are some people, God bless them, they're doing full-time ministry. God bless them. But there are people who really need to be doing full-time ministry and really need to be fully supported. Rob Christian is one of them. So I'm going to give you the link to his YouTube channel. Subscribe. See how you can support him on via Patreon. We need these people in full-time ministry until Jesus returns and calls us into his glorious presence. Now, I'm going to ask Rob a few questions because he knows the Arabic. They can't play games with him. Okay. He, they cannot play games with this young man. And I, I feel old. I say he's younger than me. Oh, boy. You're making me feel old. Can you go if you if you have the Quran with you, brother, so that they can see yes. <clears throat> what the Arabic says? Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2 of the Quran, Ayah 157. Surah Al-Baqarah. Yeah, I'm on, now, guys, I'm going to ask him specific questions because he knows the Arabic. 157, you said? 157, yeah. Chapter 2, verse 157. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Almost there. Yeah, so yeah, don't don't rush, my brother. Now, if uh, you, you'll you be able to post it on your screen, or do I, you want me to remove this? Uh, I think I can. Just a second. Good. Guys, pay attention. Right. He's got you the Arabic. Now, brother, you see in the English, it says, these are the, the people upon whom are the blessings from their Lord and mercy. Now, you know Arabic. Does the verse say that these people have the blessings of the Lord or the prayers of their Lord and His mercy? Salawat. Salawat. Ana usalli. I am praying. Who are you salli? Nahnu, we. Nahnu nusalli. Salawat. Prayers. So how did prayers became blessing? Here, if Allah was, was not uh, the worst communicator in the whole history of communicators, Allah should have said, Barakat, not Salawat. So do you see how they have to tap dance and use all kinds of mental gymnastics to play with the translation, sugarcoat it and call it blessing. It's Salawat, prayers. How did prayers became blessings? So oh. Allah is praying? Allah is praying. Thank Allah you. is praying. So I want everyone to see, he just gave you the Arabic. He can read it <clears throat> better than most Muslims. It says, upon them are the prayers of their Lord and his mercy. So according to the Quran, Allah prays. He engages in prayer. Now, you know I'm going to go with this. 
Can you go to chapter 33, verse 43 of the Quran? Chapter 33, verse 43 of the Quran. Because now we're introducing more problems. Because if Allah prays, that means he has to pray to someone. Yeah, maybe we can also we can also go to ayah 56 too. Oh, definitely. To make it even more. <laughs> that was going to be the one right after. But <laughs> I want you to read the Arabic. Now, guys, he's going to read the Arabic. There are two verses here. We're 43, right? Yeah, 43, chapter 33, 43. Now, notice again, Rob, this is a Muslim mm -hmm. translation. Notice what they did again. It mm -hmm. is he who sends blessings upon you, and so do his angels. Does it say blessing? Does Allah send blessings? As the angels no. do? What does it say? Read it. No, no, that's a lie from hell. A lie from hell. Watch. Huwa alladhi yusalli alaykum. What? It is he, it is he who prays upon you. Uh oh. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. When Allah prays upon his believers, which is the Muhammadans. When Allah prays, to who does Allah pray? Hmm. Exactly. I want an answer. I want an answer. And then the next verse, he prays for Muhammad. Verse 56, Rob, if you can show them yes. verse 56. Because I'm gonna, there's a few verses I'm gonna have you walk us through. Mm -hmm. Verse 56. Okay. This right. is uh, one of the most damaging ones, and I love to use this. In Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu Indeed Allah and his angels yusalluna ala an nabi Wait again Allah and his angels pray on the prophet Can, Do you remember uh, that debate that hot debate between David Wood yeah, yeah, and yeah, Muhammad yeah. Hijab my, yeah, Allah prays for not to. Yeah, Mimi Nikab. Yeah, he claimed to be an expert, and he said, "I knew." Uh, and I quote, Muhammad, "Muhammad Hijab said, I knew I I had to teach you Arabic lessons.' Uh, Muhammad Hijab, you claim to be a teacher, an expert in the Arabic language. Why did you lie to your audience? Why did you lie? It does not mean for. It does not mean to. It means on the Prophet." In Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala means on the prophet praying on the prophet it's not for it's not to I mean I don't blame dear brother Dr. David Wood I don't blame him not knowing Arabic saying that it means for the prophet it's on but hey if you Muhammad Hijab claims to be an Arabic expert and you're going to teach our brother David Wood Arabic lessons at least get your facts straight again when Allah prays to who does Allah pray? I mean, uh, let's assume it means blessing for a split second. I understand. I understand if the angels want to ask Allah to pray or, or let's say to, to bless Muhammad. Because remember, angels do not bless anybody. The blessing should come from the source. And who is that source? It's Allah. I understand that the angels may ask Allah to bless Muhammad. Let's go with that. But wait, wait. When Allah is going to pray, to who does he ask? Is he asking another Allah? Is, is he asking Jibreel? Is he asking maybe Isa to bless Muhammad? Because again, it's not yubarikuna, it's yusalluna. So if Allah again wants want it to, want it to be crystal clear, as he claims that his Quran is a crystal clear book, a crystal clear divine revelation from him. Should he not have said, you barikuna, which really means blessing, baraka, blessing, you barikuna, the verb to bless. No, Allah clearly said, he and his angels are praying on the prophet. Okay. Guys, did you hear what he just told you? There's a, there's a word in Arabic for blessing, baraka. It's not used here. The word is prayer. And then you ask the question because that leads me to another example. Thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, for the gift of Rob, who knows the Arabic. Praise Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm a student of the, this brother and, and Osama and Christian Prince. God bless them. I am blessed, honestly, that the Lord has raised them up. Okay, you ask, well, who's Allah praying to? Is he praying to another Allah, maybe Jesus? That actually brings up another passage I want you to look at. 
because uh -oh. the Muslims butcher these texts, uh, Rob. And this is why, unless we go study Arabic, we're not going to catch it. But we have something better. We have you, brothers. We have you to expose the Arabic for us. Can you go, if you don't mind, Surah al maryam chapter 19 of the Quran. And when you get there, read 63 and 64. But first, I want to see how your translation renders 64. Chapter 19, verse 64. Guys, remember, he knows Arabic. You can't pull a fast one with this brother. You can't play 64. games with this brother. Okay? 64, see? right? Yeah, see, there you go. You see what they did, Rob? In parentheses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. said Angel Jibreel to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them. Can you do me a favor? Can you look at 63 and 64? Mm -hmm. Tell me who's speaking in 63, and does the speaker change in 64? Is it the same speaker in 63 and 64? Uh, okay. Because in 64, the words, Gabriel's not there. No, the this is edit. There. This is edit. And the this word is angels edit. is not there. You notice it says, and we angels added the word angels? No. There is no nothing called angels here. It's Allah. It should so be Allah. Can you, can you break down 63, 64 to show that Allah is speaking in the plural and saying mm -hmm. that we do not come down except by command of your Lord? Yeah. Uh, Allah saying, your Lord orders me to come down if we if we simply switch translation you can see the taqiya already so let's see if we can switch the translation and make it easy because all the all these words between brackets it's not there it yeah. says we come not down save at the command of thy lord rabbika rabbika so that means thy lord to him belongs all that is before us and all that is behind us and all between that so nowhere does it say Angels, as you saw earlier in that false translation, it does not talk about angels. So go ahead, brother. And then now do me a favor since you got this accurate translation. See, they're catching it. The light switch is going on. Read yeah. 63 and 64. 63 and 64. Just first start with 63 because I'm going to ask you questions. That is paradise which we shall give as an inheritance to those of our servants who are God-fearing. Next ayah, we come not down, save at the commandment of thy Lord. To him belongs all that is before us and all that is behind us and all between that. Now, Rob, here's my question. In 63, it says, mm -hmm. that is paradise, which we shall give as an inheritance to those of our servants. Now, that has to be Allah speaking, right? Yes. Min ibadina, our servants, our slaves. And he's the one who gives paradise, right? Yes. But then, Rob, help me understand. In 64, the same speaker says, we come not down except by the commandment of thy Lord. How in the world is Allah saying that he comes down by the command of Muhammad's Lord? Exactly. Exactly. This is this is really damaging. How did this become the angels? Thank you. Yes. So, Rob, I'm not re misreading it, right? Because you know the no. Arabic. So the no. Arabic is showing. Yes. Allah is the one saying, we, we give to our servants paradise. And then the same speaker is Allah who says, then we do not come down except by command of your Lord Muhammad. Yes. Rabbaka, yeah. Exactly. exactly. I'm confused. How is this possible? Yeah. I, yeah. How, I mean, uh, does this make sense? No. No. Well, uh, what do you expect from the worst communicator in history? Muslims need to do all kinds of mental gymnastics to prove to us, hey, uh, you know, Allah is not actually saying that he's praying. No, uh, it means blessing. But wait, blessing means barakah, right? Blessing means barakah. Yeah. Praying yeah. is you saluna. You ana usalli. I am praying. Nahnu nusalli. We pray. Allah and his angels, you saluna. They pray on, right? They pray on. So, and, and, and for the Muslims, actually, there are some Muslims who try to act smart. Let me give you an example, uh, brother uh, Sam. When when you say, let's say you're an imam, right? Let us go back to that last ayah, just to make sure. Let us say you are an imam or a priest, and you're going to pray on a deceased, on a dead guy who just recently died, right? In the Arabic, you're going to say, Ana usalli ala al -mayyit. Did you catch it? I, yeah. I am praying on the deceased. The same way, the same verb. In Allah wa malaikatu, you saluna ala. Again, if I am an imam of, or I'm an, a Christian priest, I would say, 
Ana usalli ala. Allah and his angels, you saluna ala. So do you see how they are tap dancing? Trying to act smart with people who do not know Arabic, but that taqiyya game, that makr game that they use, that Allah himself used, the makr, khayrul makarin, the best of all deceivers, it's not working with me. It's not working with me because I'm going to use it against you and your prophet in the court of law. You see how when you are an imam, it's the same way that you are praying. It's still the imam is praying on the deceased. Al Imam Yusalli Ala in Allah wa Malaikatu Yusalluna Ala. Oh oh, oh boy. Now Sam, here's when you have to, when you need to say surprise. Surprise, <laughs> like, David. Oh, Three, man, you're, you're four, killing me, man. Two. You're, you're killing me with that. You do it so natural, brother. <laughs> surprise. By the way, I got a couple more. I need your Arabic expertise, so we'll open up the Q and A. So if you don't mind, because sure. I want I want well, I want them to understand. Someone knows Arabic will see the Quran is so confused. It has Allah speaking of someone else as his Lord and God. Let me repeat what we're showing you from this. See, he's Arabic speaker and reader. He sees it. But because of English translations, it butchers it. These examples that he's going to show you from the Arabic, because I'm going to take him there. You're going to have Allah speaking. But Allah speaks of someone else as his Lord and his God. So Allah Worship someone else as his Lord and his God. So I'm going to give a couple more examples and I'll open up Q&A. So get ready with your questions. Again, chapter 19 of the Quran, Surah Al-Maryam. Let's go to verse 36. But we're going to look at 35 and 36 so that yes. people understand the one who's supposed to be speaking is Allah because the translations, they butchered. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. here, guys, uh, he's, I got, he's got the English. Notice what they did again. We're going to read 35. It does not befit Allah to appoint someone as a son. Now, according to the Muslims, this is Allah speaking. Allah speaking. It does not befit Allah to appoint someone as a son. Purity is to him. When he ordains a matter, he just commands it be, and it thereupon happens. Notice what they did in 36. If you non-Arabic readers of the Quran, you're going to think that the Quran says, and Jesus said, and said Isa, indeed Allah is my Lord and your Lord, therefore worship him. This is the straight path. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Brother Ab, in yeah. the Arabic of 36, does it say Isa said this? No, I, I challenge any Muslim to show me the, the word or the name Isa. Where does it say that? And it says, wa inna Allah Rabbi. Right? So it says, indeed, Allah is my Lord. So here they are adding, sugarcoating. Playing, doing bid'ah, which is nothing but a haram. People used to get killed for it. So why this translator, who is this guy, Ahmed Raza Khan, why is he allowed to do bid'ah, which is haram in Islam, to the right. Quran? People are getting killed for it, brother. Exactly. Could you look at Arbery? So then I'm going to have you confirm yes. this, Arbery. Yes. Guys, listen to Rob confirm this point for you. Now we're going to read 35, 36. 35 to see that speaker doesn't change guys pay attention it is not for god to take a son unto him glory be to him when he decrees a thing he but says to it be and it is surely god is my lord and your lord so serve you him this is a straight path now understand according to muslims allah will speak in the third person allah will often refer to himself in the third person so it's allah speaking in 35 but then allah says in 36 allah says in 36 Surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so serve you him. This is a straight path. Now, Rob, is yeah. it not true that the same speaker in 35 is the same speaker in 36? And according to the Muslims, the Quran is not the words of Muhammad. It's Allah's words. Exactly, exactly. Who is he talking? Is Allah saying to himself, uh, surely Allah is my Lord? This proves here Muhammad shot himself in the feet. Yeah. Proving that he is the one who is fabricating these ayahs. Do you see, as I explained to you earlier, do you see how Muhammad is the one who is fabricating ayahs? Do you see how the Quran is nothing but the word of Muhammad, who also, like we said earlier, he is the same guy who elevated himself to the equal status of Allah. And here Muhammad split us, uh, uh, fell on his head, right? He fell on his head. <laughs> and he made a huge disaster proving that he's the one who's writing these eyes because you're not going to tell me that Allah is saying, oh, Allah is the one speaking, saying, surely Allah is my Lord. 
Is Allah saying that? Surely Allah is my Lord? Hmm. <clears throat> so you guys wow. are getting this, right? The Arabic of the Quran, which is supposedly Allah speaking, yet it has Allah speaking of someone being his Lord and his God whom he worships. This is how bad the Arabic Quran is, which is why the English, they insert words. But again, that's why you got to thank Jesus for gifts like Rob Christian, who won't let the Muslims get away with it. A few more examples, brother, and then we'll open up the Q&A. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I want you to do, yeah, let's go to chapter 33, verse 36. I want to ask you, there's a few more that I want to hammer on because we need your Arabic expertise. If you guys want proof, if you want proof that Muhammad is Allah's equal, and that to please Muhammad is to please Allah. 33 of the Quran, chapter 33, verse 36. 36, okay. Yeah. Let's go there. Okay. And yeah, I'm going to go through that one too. Okay. You know the Arabic very well, and it says, No Muslim man or woman has any right in the affair when Allah and his noble messenger have decreed or command regarding it. <clears throat> now, look, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is it true that it's Allah alone who decrees, right? No, 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 no. Who said that? Are the Muslims saying it? No way. It says Allah wa Rasuluhu. Allah wa Rasuluhu. So it's Allah and his messenger. Oh, wow. So the, the Quran is saying not only Allah decrees and commands, Allah and the messenger decree and command. And so Muhammad's yes. command is Allah's command. Muhammad's decree is Allah's decree. And you got to obey Muhammad's command because it's Allah's command. Exactly. Let us, for, for argument's sake, if we remove the name Allah or uh, Allah himself, how, what does it say? That it's it becomes the command of the Rasul. Just remove Allah and you'll see that it's Muhammad. It, it has always been about Muhammad. Muhammad is making himself equal to Allah, right? Muhammad is the one who makes himself equal with Allah. And you see, you can't, you can't, Allah can't do anything without the Rasul because it says, Allahu wa rasuluhu. Wow. You guys saw that, right? It is the decree of Allah and his messenger, the command of Allah and his messenger. Allah doesn't decree alone. He decrees with Muhammad, his partner. A <clears throat> couple more examples, brother, because these are the points I want them to see because they're getting it. See, you see their reaction. Yeah. And I, I, before we go there, since we are talking yeah. about these disasters, can we yeah. do, uh, before you, uh, please remember what you want to say. If we can also show chapter 9, if, if that's okay with you, chapter oh, 9. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's ayah, good. Brother, brother. Yeah. Chapter 9, yeah. ayah 30, 31. Oh, yeah, that's what someone here. just mentioned. Go ahead, yes. This is, this is really, really, really damaging. And here, thanks to the Lord. And I think that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ intervened here. And he is yeah. actually who, who made Muhammad bust himself. Watch. Yes. Uh oh. They have taken what? They have taken their monks and scholars as lords instead of Allah and Al Masih. Wow! So who are the lords? Who are the lords, guys? Who are the gods? Allah and Al-Masih. Wow! So here, do you see how Muhammad slipped? And he made yeah. Allah and Jesus, the Messiah, Al-Masih, as we call him, Al-Masih. He made him equal with Allah. So who are the gods, guys? Who are the gods? The Messiah hmm. And Allah. So do you see how they are tap dancing? Do you see how they are doing bid'ah? Adding words that are not in the text. Do you see how they add it also without any shame? Without any dignity? They are playing with the Quran. Muslims, do you have any honor? Do you have any shame when you play with your Quran doing bid'ah? Exactly. Do you have any shame? No, they don't. It's ironic. Guys, the Muslims accuse Christians and Jews of misinterpreting the Bible, perverting it just like chapter 3, verse 78 of the Quran says, and yet they're the ones doing the very thing to their Quran, desecrating it, butchering it, decimating it, in order to make it agree with their theology. With that said, brother, can you go to chapter 11, verse 56? Guys, get your questions ready. I see a few of them. Repeat them more than once, mm -hmm. because Rob, I'm going to bring Rob, God willing, back again in the near future. But now, Rob, in this passage, tell me, even in the... 
English, you can see it. But we know that Muslims pray daily when they're praying to be guided on the straight path. Sirat al-Mustaqim, guided on the straight path. Now, we know creatures need to be guided. And the one who supposedly guides them is supposed to be Allah. But Rob, in that verse, both in English and Arabic, Mm -hmm. Don't you have Allah himself on the straight path? That Allah is on the straight path? Can you confirm that? Yes. Uh, let's see. Exactly. Surat al-Mustaqeen. That means Allah, Rabbi, ala Surat al-Mustaqeen. So it, it means my Lord who needs guidance on the straight path. Did you catch wow. it? Rabbi, <laughs> ala Rabbi, on the straight path. Surat al-Mustaqeen. The straight path. Indeed, my Lord can be found on the straight path. It's close, but not as I want it to be. But it, as you see, it's Allah who, who must go on the straight path. So how can Allah, and, and, and this actually also, if we go to Surah Al-Fatiha, this shows how that Allah, if you're going to say that the Quran is the speech of Allah, this proves that Allah needs guidance to be guided on the straight path. Because Surah Al-Fatiha, who is the one talking there? You Muslims always say that the Quran is the speech of Allah. So are you saying that Allah needs guidance, people? Muslims, you have a, you have a disaster to, to do. You guys, you caught what you, what you just showed you, right? Hmm. Allah, the God of Muslims, is on a straight path. To yes. be on a straight path means you're on a path headed to a destination. And supposedly that destination is supposed to be paradise. Why is Allah, the God of Muslims, on the straight path with the Muslims, heading to Jannah, in contrast to our Lord Jesus who says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So now notice the difference. Our Lord Jesus is not on the straight path. He is the straight path to heaven. Their God, Allah, is on the straight path with them. What is going on here? Exactly. You guys got it? Exactly. Uh, it since we're talking about uh, Jannah, let's say, uh, you know, I, I love to talk about the word Jahannam. Now, uh, Brother Sam, Yes. Can you tell our audience who are watching, uh, God, please bless them and the people who are watching and are supporting your work, uh, Brother Sam. Can you tell us where Muslims, and in this case, Muhammad, where did he get the word Jahannam from? Of course, it's from our mother tongue, man, you, yours and mine. Yeah. People don't where, know. Did he, where did he get this word from? Is it actually yeah. hell or is it something totally something different? Yeah. Well, the word Jahannam, in the Greek you'll find a Gehinna, it comes from the valley of Hinnam. So we have a lot of Syriac words in the Arabic Quran. But, mm -hmm. of course, you've done more research on this. Where did he get it from, Rob? I think he got it uh, from us. He, he, he yeah. borrowed it and he plagiarized it from us because it's, it does not mean hell. It's actually, a, 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 if I'm not mistaken... And please yes. correct me. I think it means a graveyard, right? Yes, because it comes from the word Valley of Hinnam. The Ouch. Valley of Hinnam. Ouch, yes. Muslims. Yes. And wow. then so he stole it from our ancestors because a lot of the words that come into the Quran came from Hebrew Greek through Syriac. And you are Syriac speaker. People may not know that. You're Syrioyo. So yeah. you speak Syriac. And yes. a lot, of, is it true? A lot of the words in the Quran are from Syriac. Yeah, uh, to, to, to be specific, even the word Quran, Quran comes from the Aramaic, from the Syriac. Watch. Quryonu, guys, please yeah. listen carefully. Quryonu or Quryana depends on the dialect. I think Sam, because he's yeah. he's using a different dialect than I. Uh, I would say Quryana. Quryana. I say Quryonu. Quryonu or Quryana tfaulus shliho. What does that mean? The book or the message of the Apostle Paul. Did you catch it? Quryonu or Quryana at follows Shliho. So even the word Quran is an Aramaic word. Wow. But Rob, I'm confused. Yeah. Help me understand. The Quran is supposed to be eternal, uncreated. So it's always existed even before creation, before the languages, right? Yes. But okay, Rob, now help me understand logic. If the Quran is eternal, uncreated, it existed before our languages, how does the Quran before creation, before languages, have words from Syriac and Greek and other languages when those languages did not exist? 
Yes, exactly. That's that's <laughs> you're asking me the question, but we need to ask the Muslims this question. What are Syriac uh, or Aramaic words doing in the Quran? Why is the Quran? Uh, why is it? Why is it an Aramaic word? Actually, I believe, I believe that the Quran, the original Quran, yes. used to be in Aramaic, and we know why. Why do we know that? Because if we go to the Hadith, let's say to Sahih al Bukhari. We know that waraqa, and this actually should be used often by uh, brother Sam, by you and David Wood. If we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, and matter of fact, let me uh, look up the hadith, we can see that waraqa ibn Nufil, waraqa ibn Nufil is also a prophet in Islam who used to write the translation from Muhammad from Aramaic to Arabic. What is the translation? The Injil. Wow, watch. Let me go to the hadith and put it on the screen. And this proves actually that when Waraka, when he was alive, oh, this, this is the short version, just a second, hmm. if I can get the longer one. And this, this hadith is also uh, the hadith uh, where Muhammad became suicidal. If we scroll down, just a second, guys, bear with me. Here it says the following Khadija then took. Him who Muhammad to Waraka bin Nofil. Do you see it? Waraka bin Nofil, the son of Khadija's paternal uncle, meaning her cousin. Waraka had been converted to Christianity. Wait, now he, he here is the, the, the disaster, uh, brother Sam. Here, where here it is when you need to be an Arabic speaker. Why? Because I will give any Muslim a thousand dollars if you can show me the word Christianity. I will give you. A thousand dollars if you can show me the word Christianity in the Arabic. No, it says Fatanassara or Tanassara. What does it mean? He became a Nasrani. So do you see how they are tap dancing in the translation again? Waraka became a Nasrani, not a Masihi. Masihi means a Christian, not a Nasrani. Anyway, Waraka has converted to a Nasrani in the pre-Islamic period. And here comes the meat. And used to write Arabic and write of the gospel in Arabic as much as Allah wished him to write. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 4953. Muslims, when you say that the gospel is lost or corrupted, how dare you to call waraqa, how dare you to call your prophet a liar because the Injil in its uncorrupted form used to be translated and was in the hands of of both Waraka and Muhammad. And not only that, as you see, even Waraka was a prophet. Why? Because it says Allah wished him to write. Yes. Now, Sam, Muslims always say Muhammad is the last prophet. He is the seal of all the prophets, yeah. right? He is yeah. the seal of. Wait, are you saying that Waraka was a prophet together with Muhammad in the same time, exactly. in the same timeline? Yes. Wow. Wow. Brother, uh, the word Allah wished him to write, the yes. Arabic phrase, mm -hmm. is this an accurate translation of it, do you think? Or did they kind of water it down? Let's see if we go there, just a second. Because you know how they water down some of the terms, right? Yes. Yeah, so you have the advantage of knowing the Arabic. Is it really Allah wished him to? Uh, let's see. It's a long hadith. Give me a second, brother. Yeah. Okay, brother, take your time. Uh, because This is education because the people are reaction. They're being blown away. I'm looking at the reaction. See, this is mm -hmm. stuff that we need to put in the hands of the non-Arabic speaking Christians. Non-Arabic speaking. You non-Arabic speaking Christians, you got to learn this stuff. You got to really eat up. If you really want to see Muslims come to Christ and destroy Islam, you got to go to these channels. Christian Prince, Rob Christian, Usama, Dr. al Fadi. Now, Rob Christian and Christian Prince spend a lot more time breaking down the Arabic. Whereas al Fadi and Usama... They try to keep it as simple as possible because they know their audience is not very fluent in Arabic. But you need the blessing of Rob Christian, Christian Prince, who give you the Arabic and break it down and show you these things in the Arabic that the Muslims are not showing you. Right? Yes. So yes. this is why I'm tapping into his brain because I'm a student of Rob Christian and Christian Prince. So this is not a lie uh, because they read Arabic. I don't. I know Muslims think I do because I, I, I'm a very good actor. No, I'm just kidding. I don't use deception. <laughs> I am not a follower of Allah. I don't use makir. <laughs> rats. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, if, if Even if the expression is probably not even there. Does it say it? 
just a second. It says, وَكَانَ وَكَانَ يَكْتُبُ الْكِتَابِ Even the expression, Allah, Allah wished it wasn't there? Hmm. Yeah, it says, as Allah, ما شاء الله أن يكتبه. So يكتبه. So it says when Allah wished him to write, ما شاء الله أن يكتبه. So Allah wished him to write. Allah you wished. You wished. Allah is given divine revelation to ورقة to write it down. What the Injil? Wow. So and, and even with the word ما شاء, can we say also translate Allah willed him to write? Yes. Yes. Allah is because, commanding him to write. Good, good. Because the reason why someone mm -hmm. can say wishes, eh, not, but it's actually, you can better translate it as Allah commands or Allah willed him to write, right? You know what? Let us go to Google Translate. Maybe Rob Christian is lying. Maybe Sam Shimon is lying, right? Well, anyway, we know Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe uh, we are lying. Well, let us see what it says. If we go hey, you guys. Watch. to the Arabic. This is my door, man. Sorry. It says he mash, it comes out funny, but you'll get the idea. Masha, it is unfortunately it is Google Translate, but it says God did not want to write. So you get the idea that it's it's talking God about wants writing. Him to write. Yes, that's what it comes out funny, but it, it you you'll get the idea. Right? So you see, it's God wants him to write. He yes. will commanded him to write. So you see, yes. guys, the the hadith says Allah wanted him, commanded him. Will them to write the gospel. So there yeah. you go, a gospel. Now, one more question because people got confused. Yeah, just a second, Sam. Let me play the robot voice so you will see that we are not lying. Do you hear it? No. Didn't come out. I'm not sure if it's coming through. No, not from my okay. end. But yeah. You hear me perfectly. Yeah, because, yeah, because it's, uh, you know, it's coming from my side. That's why we are sharing the screen. So it says, Masha'Allahu an yaktuba. Masha'Allahu an yaktuba. It does not mean God did not want to know. Actually, it means God wanted him to write. Yeah. It's Again, much more God powerful. wanted him to write. Right? Yeah. So it's much more powerful than that. Another thing that people got baffled. So, guys, I want you to see the dishonesty of these translations. Mm -hmm. The Quran refers to Christians. And then it said that Waraka became Christian. Now, mm -hmm. you emphasize the Arabic. Yes. It didn't say he became Christian. He became Nasrani. Yes. And the Arabic word used in the Quran for quote-unquote Christians. What's the word in Arabic in the Quran? Nasara. I can show it to you. Just and when you show it, what in the world is a Nasara? Why does the Quran call the followers of Isa? Those who read the gospel, Nasara, whereas a Christian in Arabic is a Masihi, right? Yes, exactly. Can you here. On that a little bit? Because the yes. non Arabic Christians have no idea because when they read the Quran, it says Christian, they're thinking the Arabic says Christian. Can you yes. expound and help the people here who don't know Arabic? Yes, here, this is for example, chapter Al Ma'ida, Surah Al Ma'ida, chapter 5, ayah 69. Surah Al Ma'ida, ayah 69. Inna ladina amanu. وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا Those are the Jews. وَالصَّابِئُونَ وَالنَّصَارَ Did you catch it? They are translating it as Christians. But wait, as you said, Christians are, maybe you can type it in the chat. Christians are called Masihiyin. أنا مسيحي ابن مسيحي. I'm a Christian, son of a Christian. Did you catch it? أنا مسيحي. I'm a Christian. Son of a Christian. Ana Masihi ibn Masihi. Nahnu Masihiin. I am not a Nasrani. Nahnu Mish Nasara. Nahnu Mish Nasara. So Muhammad confusing us with a heretical sect that used to live in the same area with Muhammad, that Muhammad completely annihilated. They actually, they actually don't exist anymore. And people, please, I know uh, Brother Sam mentioned this a couple of times. Don't confuse the Nasara with the Nestorians. Don't confuse them with the Nestorians. Never do that, please, for the love of God. Don't confuse, right. because the Nasara are not uh, the Nestorians. Maybe you can elaborate about it. Uh, yeah, because someone made that confusion. Thank you for clarifying it. Someone just said, Nestorians, no. Nestorians are not <clears throat> Nasara, no. The title Nestorian was given to 
our ancestors, the Aramaic Syriac speaking Christians, the Assyrian Church of the East, because they were identified with the Bishop Nestorius. You exactly. non Arabic, non Middle Eastern Christians. Nestorian means followers of Nestorius. Nestorius was a bishop in the fifth century. Nestorius was accused of teaching. Now we have writings from him showing he didn't believe that, but that's okay. He was accused of saying there's a divine Christ and a human Jesus, two different persons that united. What in reality Nestorius believed, you guys got to know your history. Nestorius believed there's only one eternal divine person, the son who became man. So he's one person who's God and man. But his problem was, he said, do not call the mother of our Lord, the mother of God. That's what he said. Do not call her the mother of God. Why? Because you're going to confuse the non-Christians into thinking that Mary is a goddess who gave birth to, to a God and gave that God his divine nature. So he got condemned. And those of you who know your history, the Orthodox here and the Catholic, you know where he got condemned in the Council of Ephesus. The Council of Ephesus in the year 431 AD. 431 AD, a council was convened at Ephesus saying, if anyone denies the title, Theotokos, the God bearer, mother of God, he or she is condemned. So he got condemned for denying the title. Theotokos for Mary, meaning Mary is the God bearer, the mother of God. But he believed Jesus was one person, eternal God who became flesh, but he was just against calling Mary the mother of God. So that was what Nestorius was condemned for. The Assyrian church agreed with Nestorius. The Assyrian church said, yes, we agree. We should call her the mother of Christ, though he's God in the flesh. They got condemned. So Nestorians are not the same group mentioned in the Quran. So with that said, Rob, you're telling us, you're telling us, the mm -hmm. Quran nowhere mentions the Christians. It mentions some group called Nasara, exactly. but the Nasara are not the Christians, such as the Catholics, the Orthodox, the Assyrians, no. the Coptics. No. Uh, actually, we have no idea exactly what they used to believe because they don't exist anymore. Muhammad completely destroyed them. We don't know who they are. Uh, we have no idea what they actually used to believe. But we know if we go, we have to go by the Muslim sources. We have to go by the Quran and the Hadith. We have to assume, unfortunately, because these people don't exist anymore. We have to assume that they must be a heretical sect because Muhammad uh, had a different uh, view. Because maybe they used to believe in something totally different than we do. And we are called Messiahiyin. Remember, we are Messiahiyin. I'm a Messihi. I'm a Mish Nasrani. I'm not a Nasrani. Sam Shamoun, who is also from the Middle East, he's not called a Nasrani. Okay. We are Messiahiyin. We are followers of Christ, Al Messiah. So here's another uh, disaster that we just uh, found, uh, Brother Sam. Since we are talking about chapter 5, I 69, anyway, it says here, Wasabiuna, which means the Sabians. But there's a grammatical, actually a grammatical, call it a spelling mistake in this chapter. Watch why. Chapter 5, compared chapter 5 with I 69 with chapter 2, I 62. Chapter 5, I 69. Take notes, guys, with chapter 2, I 62. Here, the Sabians, the Sabians are supposedly to be believers, right? How can they believers when Sabians, Actually, we're not the people of the book. The people of the book are the Jews and the Christians. So here Muhammad is calling also the Sabians. We know that the Sabia are not believers like we do. They don't worship the same God. On top of that, like we said, in this case, he is calling them a Sabi'een. And the other eye is calling him a Sabi'oon. So is it a Sabi'oon? Or a Sabi'in, Sabi'in, chapter 2, ayah 62, or is it a Sabi'un? Which one is it? Only one can be correct. I mean, uh, Sam, can I call you Samar if your name is Sam? No. no these are a group of people, right? They, these are Jews, these are Christians. How are you calling them differently? 
Is it Sabi'in or Sabi'un? You see how Muhammad actually is creating a lot of disasters in the Quran? So let me unpack this so they can see the impact of what you're saying. Okay, guys, understand. So, Rob, the Quran is supposedly uncreated, yes. eternal. It existed before creation. So, guys, understand that's what Muslims believe about the Quran. Uncreated, eternal, existed before creation. So this eternal Quran, Rob, mm -hmm. mentions some group called Nasara. We don't yes. know who they are. They've been wiped out. So Allah in eternity before creation mm -hmm. was more concerned about some group called Nasara that would come into existence at the future time in a certain area and then would disappear. No one knows who they are. But yes. Allah and his eternal uncreated Quran did not bother himself or concern himself to discuss what the majority of Christians would believe historically. Exactly. Because remember, a couple miles uh, uh, in, no in the north, we know that there are Byzantines living in the time of Muhammad. These are Messihiyin. These are the real Christians. Why are you calling them not Messihiyin? Why are you calling them Nasara? Remember, Muhammad even sent a letter to the Roman Emperor, the Byzantine Emperor. Aslim, Teslim, Aslim, Teslim, convert or else. And Muhammad was also defeated in his first battle with the Roman Emperor. So the Roman Emperor is called a Messihi. Why Muhammad? Why Allah? We know Muhammad and Allah are the same guy. Why are you confusing the real Christians, the Messihiyin, with the Nasara? Uh-oh. This proves, this proof that the Quran cannot be divine. This proves that Muhammad is a fake prophet. This proves that the writer of the Quran, which you Muslims call Allah, cannot be all-knowing, cannot be God. Because if Allah claims to be God, he cannot have a cake and eat it too and confuse hered a heretical sect, a group of people that are not Messihiyin, calling them Christians. So they have to do all kind of nasty tap dancing. I think these Muslim translators uh, will outdance Michael Jackson himself <laughs> because they, are, they have to do all kind of man, yeah. man. Why are you not? Why are you not calling them simply Nasara? I mean, it says Nasara. Why are you putting Christians here? Exactly. Shame on you. They're just honest. Now, the second point I want them to get, because remember that we have to educate our non Middle Eastern Arabic speaking Christian brothers so that they can know this material. So you're saying. The word sabi, uh, Sabians, that's the English yes. translation. Yes. The guys pay attention to his point. I want you to get this point. Sabians used in chapter 5, verse 69, chapter 2, verse 62. In the Arabic Quran, which is supposed to be perfect and created. In one place, it's, it's, it's Sabiun. Sabiun. Yes. That's in one place, 569. But in the other occurrence, 262, it's Sabiin. Yes. So Sabi they're not spelled the same in Arabic. Exactly. And only one can be correct. And we know that Sabi'in Sabi is the correct way. So as Sabi'un, as it's written here in chapter 5, ayah 69, you can cross, put a big red cross on here because Allah failed his Arabic exam. We should ask Allah and his illiterate prophet to go back to pre, uh, preliminary school and learn the basic Arabic Spelling rules, because you're not going to tell me that this is a divine book from God, while God can make mistakes. Remember, Muslims always say the Quran is a perfect book. It's a divine revelation from Allah. Right. Not one dot is changed. Not one letter is changed. But wait, this is not, not only it. Actually, even the word Quran, brother uh, Sam, mm -hmm. while well, we are at it anyway, let me show you. A disaster, another disaster, and this is the Hafs, by the way. This is the Hafs. Let me show you guys. Bear that with liar, me. Huh? The Kazab, Hafs, yeah. the Kazab, right? Hafs, Kazab, right? Yeah. Uh, just a second, please, guys, bear with me. I want to show yep. you an example. Uh, let's see. Listen to the stuff, re listen to the video. You have permission to upload it to your YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. So make sure you get this information down. You guys are getting gold. You got to be thankful for the Lord Jesus. That you live at a time where all of this is available for free, but then bless the people who are blessing you prayerfully and financially. Help these brothers out to do the ministry. Yeah. Watch here. Here's an example how Allah is uh, tap dancing and he sounds like a kid in the candy store. Allah changing his mind all the time. Now, Brother Sam, how 
do Muslims call the book of Allah? The way they call it Al Quran Al Kareem. Al Quran Al Kareem. Then why, if we go to the Quran, this is Hafs, by the way, this is from Quran.com. Again, the number one official website for the Quran. Muslims, if you don't believe me, if you have a Hafs Quran, open it and look it, your, look it up yourself. Do your homework, Muslims. Chapter 12, Ayah 2. Again, chapter 12, Ayah 2, verses chapter 39, Ayah 28. Here do, we can find the, uh, the word Quran. Right? Al Quran al Arabi, right? Quran. And here we can find it in chapter 39, ayah 28. Quran, Arabi, right? So it says it's an Arabic Quran. Again, we have sent it down as Arabic Quran. But wait, here there is a missing alif. Do you see it? This tiny thing that they added much later, hundreds of years later. When they started to play with the Quran, adding the vowels, these things on top, the dots, because remember, the rasm, the rasm, the skeleton Arabic text, the so-called Uthmanic Quran, did not have vowels, it did not have dots. No tanqeet, no tashkil, no dots, no vowels. If we remove this tiny thing, which is not an uh, uh, Arabic uh, letter of the alphabet, if we remove it, it becomes Quran. Remember the Quran, Quran? The Quran, Quran. So we so have Quran. Many people get this, Rob. You're yeah. saying in this in this reading, the Quran is called Quran. Quran. All right, there you go. Quran, Quran <laughs> versus then Allah changes his mind like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, changes his mind. And in chapter 38, ayah sorry, chapter 39, ayah 28 changes his mind and corrects himself and write it with a real alif. Do you see it? This is not a real letter. This is a real al Arabic alphabet letter. It's the first letter in the Arabic alphabet. Watch. Watch, guys. This is the real alphabet, right? In the Arabic. The alif, the A, basically. Do you see that long thing? That's the alif. Compare it. This is the real alif. This is what they added later to fix the Quran of Allah. So this word says Quran versus Quran. So Allah, please, is it Quran or is it Quran? Wow. Yes, Al-Quran versus Al-Quran. <laughs> Lord of mercy. See, you guys, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record. The Lord has blessed you with these men. Who know the Arabic. And there's another precious sister who also knows Arabic, daughter of Christ. If you are thankful for the Lord Jesus, for the gift that he's giving to the church of such soldiers, not only pray for them, support their ministries. We need more like Rob Christian. That's why I have him on, and God will now bring him on in the future, near future. I have a few more examples. Guys, bear with me because I, I want to take advantage of this young man and his mind that God has given him. So I have questions I want him to confirm because he can read the Arabic, so the Muslims can't say liar, ya kafir, ya kithab. Don't you know what the current says? The El currents. Okay, but you know. All right, Rob, since we're talking about Muslims worshiping Muhammad, here's what I want you to do for me. Can you go to chapter 4 of the Quran, Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 65, right? As you go, can you turn to the El Quran? The El Quran, El Quran, buddy. You're killing me, man. <laughs> You got to stay yeah. like a Westerner. So 465, Rob. And then I'll give two more two more questions. And Okuyone, guys, keep repeating your questions so I can see them. I got two more things I want him to talk about. And then the floor is open. We'll bring him on more. Now, Rob, you mm -hmm. read the Arabic. Muslims tell me that Islam is submission, surrender to Allah. Can you repeat that? Uh, can yeah. you repeat that? Uh, I lost you for a second. Yes, chapter 4, verse 65. Surah Tanisa, verse 65, you have it there. But here's what I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. Muslims tell me Islam is submission, surrender to Allah. But they never mm -hmm. tell me that Islam is really submission, surrender to Muhammad. Now, Rob, this verse, does it define Islam as submission, surrender to Allah or to Muhammad? This it, verse says, right. it says... Uh, Oh, oh, and uh, and your Lord, Warabaka, La Yu'minuna. So it says, uh, you, uh, sorry, and and your Lord, they don't believe. Hatta, Kefima Sharan, 
ثم لا في ان Yeah, it, it, it's, it's actually saying that Muhammad is the real Lord. It doesn't say what the translation says because the translation says, so, oh, dear prophet, and they have to put it in brackets. So, oh, dear prophet, by oath of your Lord. It doesn't say that. Warabbika, your Lord. So what do you want to what do you want to say to uh, what's what's your point? The last part of it where it says, remember, yes. Islam is submission and surrender. They tell me submission, surrender to Allah. But does this verse say, Submission, surrender to Allah or to Muhammad. What is Islam truly? Because at the last part it says, until they submit wholeheartedly, right? Uh, you see, it they, says, whatever you want to find a position to yeah. and they and must, they must accept, accept it wholeheartedly. But it doesn't say accept wholeheartedly, it means they must submit to it with complete submission, right? Yes, exactly. Mimma qadatum wa yusallimuhu. Taslima, yes, exactly. It's, it says actually you have to. Uh, uh, yeah, how do how do I uh, how do I translate it correctly? You have to actually uh, submit, submit wholeheartedly. That's what it says. So this verse is telling Muslims you must submit completely to the Prophet, right? Yes, exactly. So hold on, but I, the Muslims tell me Islam is submitting completely to Allah. They don't mention Muhammad when they tell me what Islam is. Mm -hmm. But here it's saying submission, Islam, is to submit completely wholeheartedly to Muhammad. Exactly, exactly. How and is this not shirk? How is this not blasphemy? Exactly. That's How exactly not my point. Yeah. Exactly my point. Now the final example I want to ask you about. Mm -hmm. Can you go to chapter 66 of the Quran, Surah Al-Tahrim? Because at two points I'm going to ask you. Chapter 66, verse 12. Guys, write down 66. The last 12. ayah, right? The last ayah of the yeah, chapter. Like that. The, you know where I'm going with this. Wow. See, now, even, now, Rob, look at the reaction of the Christians. They're like, wow. They're blown away with this information. See? They're, this is stuff that they need to study. And they can go to your, your YouTube channel. You go into the Arabic and explain it very easily, right? Yeah, exactly. If, I, if, I, if you allow me to read it in Arabic. Please. ومريم ابنة عمران التي أحسنت فرجها فنفخنا فيه من روحنا. That means Mary or Maryam. There is nothing called Mary, by the way. It's Maryam. ومريم the one. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, the Mary, the daughter of Amran, the one who guarded her vagina, and we. Blew into her from our spirit. So where is Jibreel? Muslims love to tell you that this is Jibreel. No, Allah is the one who is putting in his mouth on the fij. Oh man, this, this is disgusting. Sorry, guys. Yeah, say Sorry. it again. I want them to hear and understand uh, what you said. Because here, it's Muhammad is really insulting our mother, the mother of our Lord. It says clearly that Maryam, oh man, this disgusts me when I read it. Maryam, the daughter of Imran, the one who guarded her vagina and we blew into her from our spirit. Yeah. Did you hear the name Jibreel? No. So Muslims, why do you say this is Jibreel? And why is Allah giving Maryam oral action on her? <clears throat> yeah. Did you guys catch what he's telling you? The... Literal Arabic, it says that Mary, and again, this is not the true Mary, the true mother of our Lord Jesus. This is a satanic counterfeit. Guarded her vagina. There's and nothing called chastity. Yeah, there's no chastity. Blew. Yeah. Into yeah. her vagina. This is how yeah. filthy and disgusting this is. So you already captured that point. And yeah. secondly, by the spirit entering Mary, that's because the spirit then created the baby in her womb, right? Yes. Okay, so now help them understand. Not only is this a filthy, wicked, disgusting description, a satanic, filthy, disgusting description, because Muhammad was scum of the earth, because mm -hmm. it says Mary, which was not the true mother of our Lord, she's above this garbage, but anyway, guarded her vagina. But then Allah caused her to get pregnant by having the spirit enter through it and caused her to conceive, right? Yes. And exactly, and Muslims will tell you, yeah, but wait, Adam is created like Isa kun fayakun. But wait, where does it say that? Where is it, where does it say that 
Isa here is created like Adam, kun fayakun, or created from dust, as the other ayah uh, that they love to bring up from, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 3, ayah 35? Yeah, yeah. 359, yeah. right? 359. Where is this? Yeah, sorry, 359. Yeah, 359, exactly. So here we see that Allah is doing giving um, oral action oral inside, action. yeah, oral action. Sorry, guys. Yes, okay, it, is. This is Islam. it is what it is. He's giving oral action inside the vagina, farj. Farj can be, uh, Sam, for people who do not know Arabic, a, a man can have a farj, which means the, his male part, his penis, but a woman can also have a farj, which means her vagina. So because this is talking about Maryam, or Maryam, it means her vagina, her private part. Her female private part. And Allah is blowing inside her vagina from his spirit. Filthy, filthy, disgusting Satan. Yeah. And this also shows that the spirit who's not Allah can create, right? Yes. It's the it's the spirit is creating. Exactly. So, okay, help us understand. They say Tawheed. Allah and his spirit create. And the spirit is different from Allah. So you're saying that the spirit is equal to Allah, a co-creator with Allah? It's, it's the spirit of Allah himself. There you go. It's the spirit. Guys. guys, it's the spirit of Allah himself who is blowing inside the female part of Mary. Maryam. Sorry, Maryam, not Mary. So hear what you learn. They they lick and smooch a black stone that erases sins. That's exactly. idolatry. They worship Muhammad. They pray to Muhammad. They glorify Muhammad. And you have to submit to Muhammad. That's idolatry. And Allah's spirit creates and gives life. So notice, Allah, the Spirit, Muhammad, and the Black Stone, and Muslims tell us, Tawheed, Allah Akbar. Exactly. Glory to Jesus Christ for people like you, brother. We're going to open up the Q&A. Here's one question. First sure. question. Now, guys, get your questions ready. Sam and Rob Christian, could Nasara and the Quran be referring to Nazarene Christians? Never. Never. Because it's addressing the Christians all the Christians, all the Jews, as we showed you from chapter 5, for example, it's addressing people. Who are those people? Those are the Nasara, the, the Jews, right? The Nasara, the Jews, and the Sabians. So if you are going to call them Christians, at least call us by our real name, al Masihiyin, right? The Masihiyin. No, we are not Nasara, and it has nothing to do I mean, uh, Sam, if I'm from Nazareth, right, the city Nazar Nazareth, yes. I can be someone who, who is a uh, 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 from the city Nazareth. How do I say it in English? Sorry, my English sometimes. What, what do you call? Yeah, someone from Nazareth. Uh, yeah, Nazareth. someone from Nazareth. Yeah, Nazareth. So, but here, Allah is addressing the Jews, as you see, the Jews, the Sabians, and the so-called Nasara, who they have to translate as Christians, which is a lie. It says Al Nasara. So no, the Nazarenes are not, or the Nasar, the Nazarene uh, people who are from Nazareth are not Nasara, because this is talking about people who have faith. And when we Christians, we are followers of Christ. A Christian means someone who's following Al Masih, Masihiyin. We should have been called Messiahin, not not uh, Nasara or uh, Nazareth. Maybe you wanna make it, maybe you can explain it better. No, Rich. brother, you did an excellent job, man. I can't improve on what you're saying. So excellent. So you heard it. It's not. Did you hear what he said? They are not the Nazarene. Don't confuse that. Don't let Muslims deceive you. We don't know who they are, basically. Now, exactly. another question for my precious brother. Shamunia, this is directed to you. Can you ask Rob if it's true that Allah ordered? The angels to commit shirk. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 34. Guys, pay attention to this. You can't pull a fast one with Rob. He's going to even show you what the Arabic is. Chapter 2, verse 34. What did Allah order the angels to do? <clears throat> it says the following. This is the ayah in front of you guys. I have nothing to do with it. This is not my Quran. Muslims, this is your Quran. Iblisa. <laughs> <laughs> Again, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِذْ جُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Again, again. Here, Allah is commanding 
the malaika, right? The angels. You have to do sujood. Now, guys, sujood in Islam, sujood is an act of worship. Did you hear it? Sujood in Islam is an act of worship. Why is Allah being mad? Why is Allah angry at Iblis, the devil? And we can also go if, uh, and I know that uh, Iblis is a is a Greek word. If I'm yeah, not mistaken, what is what is yeah. yeah what is a Greek word doing in the Quran anyway? And I know Sam can explain this much better than I do. So why is Allah angry, guys? Again, take notes. Why is Allah angry when He's asking the angels, al malaika to do an act of worship, sujood, to Adam, while Satan, Iblis, is not an angel. Remember, Satan in Islam is created from smokeless fire. Again, Satan in Islam is created from smokeless fire. But the angels are different kind of beings. They are created from nur, from light. So why is Allah angry with satan so the good guy here is actually satan wow and allah is the bad guy who is acting for shirk sorry who is asking for shirk from them from the angels and on top of that if that's not already a bad thing from allah to do to ask shirk from the angels he is at the same time getting mad with iblis while iblis is not doing anything wrong so the good guy is Satan and Allah is the bad guy. Did you catch it? Yeah, so you understood it, right? And Sam T got it. So Allah gave worship ability to Adam and creatorship to Isa. Exactly. Allah allowed Adam to be worshipped and allowed Jesus to be co-creator. Isa was not the real Jesus. So guys, I'm, I'm not trying to improve on what he's saying. I want it to sink in. The word prostrate, sujood, is the word for worship given to Allah alone. Remember that, number one. Yes. So Allah saying to the angels, notice it says, he said to the angels, give this worship to Adam. That's number two. Number three, Iblis is not an angel. If you guys don't know, in chapter 18, verse 50, Iblis is supposed to be Satan. In chapter 8, verse 50, he's a genie. So why is Allah angry with Iblis for not obeying a command given to the angels, not to genies? And why is Allah commanding angels to worship a creature and then getting angry at Satan for not worshiping a creature when to worship a creature is unforgivable in Islam? Allah, what are you doing, man? Exactly. Allah is asking for shirk, but Muslims love to tell us shirk is the unforgivable sin in Islam. Wow. So is Allah asking the angels to commit shirk? Muslims, you have to deal with this. Deal with this disaster that your prophet created in his man-made book this proves that muhammad is a fake prophet you should leave islam and come back home to our lord and savior jesus christ muslims please Amen. please wake up please wake Hallelujah. up Hallelujah. please wake up here's here's this question she's a she's from a precious sister they're all precious here why allah addresses himself as we ourselves our spirit is it true that you use plural majestatis as Arabic speakers, as I was answered by Muslims. So a Muslim told her they had the plural majesty at the time of Muhammad. Now, you know the Arabic and you know the chronology. Is that true? No. Uh, the, here, here, Muhammad actually created another disaster because <laughs> he wanted to copy. Remember, when Muhammad went to Medina, he tried to be friends with the Jews. Guys, please take notes if you debate Muslims. When he went to Medina, he tried to reconcile with the Jews. Remember, Muhammad had no army. He was powerless. He had no army yet. So he needed to be friends to convince the Jews who were much powerful than him, than he was. So he tried to copy the Jews and the Christians. Remember when in, we go to the book of Genesis, let us create Adam in our image. Here, this is the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our image. So here Muhammad tried to copy God of the Holy Bible, because he wanted to become friends with the Jews. He wanted to convince them that he's a prophet, but the Jews, and we showed you, the Jews kept busting Muhammad, right? They, they kept busting Muhammad and rejected him because they knew he's nothing but a fake prophet. So this is my answer to you, to the gentleman who asked this question. This no, no, you can't play those games because Muhammad always says, 
right? Muhammad always says that the God of the Holy Bible cannot be the same God because if we go to chapter 5, ayah 18, let, matter of fact, let us go there. Chapter 5, ayah 18 proves that this cannot be the same God because God in the Quran is not the same God. Why? Because Allah is clearly saying, the Jews and the Christians said, we are the sons of Allah. We are the sons of God. That's what we Christians and Jews say. And his beloved ones say, now here Allah, we know it's Muhammad, say, why does he, Allah, then punish you for your sins? In fact, you are nothing but human beings, part of his creation. So here, Muhammad is trying to refute the Jews and the Christians, proving that Allah and the God of the Bible, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, cannot be the same God because Abraham, Moses, all the prophets call their God Father, Father of mankind, Father of the Israelites. So how can this be the same God? Amen. Hmm. Speaking of that, you know the Arabic very well, and I know the answer, but I say this because I'll say, Sam, you're, you're a kafir, you're a kadvab, you're a liar. In chapter 112, Rob, guys, listen to this. Please, you got to listen to this. Sorry, yeah. chapter? Chapter 112, Surat al-Ikhlas. Mm -hmm. Okay, my brothers and sisters in Jesus who don't know Arabic, this yes. you got to listen to, please. He's going to go to Surat al-Ikhlas, chapter 112 of the Quran. Muslims will tell you that this is the heart of the Quran. It's one third of the Quran because it's about Tawheed. Yes. Now, my brother, I've been told by Arabic-speaking Christians Mm -hmm. And remember, I'm not Arab. I wasn't raised in the Middle East. I wasn't taught Arabic grammar. I'm mm -hmm. dependent on you. And you guys are servants of the true God who will not lie because you serve and worship Jesus Christ, who is the God of truth. And because you love the Lord, you would not lie if you fear the Lord. And you do because you love him. So is it true, my brother, when it says, say, Allah is one, Ahad. It's mm -hmm. not one. It means one of? Uh, yes. It says the following. Qul, guys, please pay attention. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Now, I as an Arabic speaker need to ask the following question immediately. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Ahad of what? One of what? Ahad al-alihad? Ahad al-awlad? What is Allah? One of the donkeys? Maybe one of the horses? What is Allah saying? Actually, I believe... I believe here, here is, are a couple of words missing. At least one word missing. Because Allah is trying to say that he's one of the many gods of the Kaaba. Because Allah, if Allah was crystal clear and he was the best communicator, he should have said, Qul huwallahu wahid. Here, Muhammad, like we said earlier, trying to reconcile with the Jews, Here's the echad, the compound unity. Remember, the shama, shama says, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Echad, Lord, 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 echad. Yachid was not used. Yachid is basically the numerical one. Echad is the compound unified one, right? Yeah. Please uh, confirm yeah. this, Sam. Oh, yeah. So Allah should have not used echad. If you Muslims claim that it's Ahad and Ikhad are the same, Allah should have sa said, Yaqid. But here, he shot himself in the feet, and it means one off. Beautiful. So you guys see that, right? Even this passage, it is bad grammar because Muhammad, the illiterate <clears throat> Jew wannabe, was trying to make a statement that was similar to the Hebrew of Deuteronomy 6.4. Let me add to what he was saying here. In Deuteronomy 6.4, it says, Shema Yisrael. Guys, this is Deuteronomy 6.4. Listen to it in Arab in Hebrew. Shema Yisrael, Yahovah. If you want to say Yahweh, that's fine. Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. In Arabic, Echad would correspond to Ahad. So Muhammad, wanting to imitate the Jews, said, Allah, Ahad. But Ahad, in that statement, as he just told you, and other Arabic-speaking Christians are saying in the comment section, Orthodox Empire, they're an Assyrian eagle. Ahad means one of. One of what? Muhammad exactly. made a boo-boo. He made a boo-boo. Here's one more because this one used to be used against me early on. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob, Muslims say that Arabic grammar rules are based on Quran. Therefore, Quran cannot have Arabic mistakes. Can mm -hmm. you answer that? Uh, sorry, let me... In go. other words, Arabic grammar... 
was developed from the Quran. How are you mm -hmm. using Arabic grammar to show the Quran is wrong when Arabic grammar comes from the Quran? Muslims say that Arabic grammar rules are based upon the Quran cannot have Arabic grammar. Uh, well, uh, the funny thing is, if they are going to make that claim, if, if the Quran is the source of the Arabic language, which is false, by the way, let us go with that. To use this argument against them. Then how can the Quran have so many mistakes? How can the Quran have so many mistakes? I can show you uh, an example and prove to you that Allah, Allah is uh, actually is shooting himself in the feet. Just a second, guys. Let me let me uh, put it on the screen again. Uh, for example, this one. Let's see. Here. I made a live show about it, uh, Brother Sam. Here is, for example, chapter 6, ayah 157. If you look closely, it says the following. فَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ Right? جَاءَكُمْ and uh, a clear sign has come to you. A clear sign has come to you. Allah is starting in chapter 6, ayah 157 with a masculine word, not knowing the difference between masculine words, because remember, Arabic, Muslims claim that Arabic is a, a, a Semitic language. In the Semitic languages, there are words that are can be masculine or feminine. Again, words that have masculine forms or feminine words. If Allah starts with a masculine word, he needs to continue with the with, with a typical the same type masculine word, but here he is using a feminine word. So Allah, Allah is, is, is starting with masculine, continues with feminine. So if Allah claims to be God and Arabic and the Quran is the source of the of the Arabic language, how can then the Quran contain Arabic mistakes that we now can use against Allah in the court of law? And later he needs to correct himself in chapter 7, ayah 73. Later, Allah <laughs> removes, removes ja'akum, calls, calls it faqad ja'atkum. Allah correcting himself. Do you see? Allah needs to correct himself later in chapter 7, ayah 73. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Everyone's so here. Go ahead, yeah, Go yeah. Ahead, so here, here, here in, the, in chapter 7, ayah 73. This is Hafs, by the way, guys. This is the Hafs Quran, the, the number one used version of the Quran. Here, Allah corrects himself and he starts with feminine and continues. Sorry, he starts with the masculine and continues with masculine. But in chapter 7, 6, ayah 157, he starts with the masculine form of a word and continues with a feminine word. Are you saying? That the source of the Arabic language, which you claim that it's the Quran, contains grammatical mistakes, Muslims. Hmm. You guys understood what he's saying. Even if you say Arabic grammar comes from the Quran, that very Arabic grammar from the Quran shows that these are grammatical mistakes. So, excellent. Glory to Jesus Christ. Now, this is a question. Uh, we'll just just before before we go right. there, bro, here's so, another example. Here's another. There are many tons of examples like these. Again, Allah not knowing the difference between feminine forms of words and masculine. The word al-an'ami is a, which means kettle, the kettle, is a feminine word. Chapter al-Nahl, chapter al-Nahl, ayah 66. The chapter of the bees, ayah 66. Allah is starting with the word kettle in a feminine form. And in the same sentence as you see, he says, Butunihi. Butunihi is a masculine form of the word, which means their bellies. So Al-An'ami is a, means the kettle is a feminine form of the word. And he continues in the same verse saying, Butunihi, which is a masculine form. So if Allah is truly God and the Quran is the source of the Arabic language, how can Allah make mistakes like these? <laughs> wow. What's wrong with you, Kafir? Allah can do what he wants. He can even speak bad Arabic if he wants. Who are you to tell him otherwise, Kafir? <laughs> and, and my Allah. friend, here, then later, after making this disastrous mistake, later Allah changes his mind and corrects himself. Look, 
This is Surat Al-Mu'minun, Ayah 21, Chapter 23. Guys, pay attention, please. Chapter 23, Ayah 21. Chapter 23, Ayah 21. Allah is going to correct himself. Watch. Al-An'am, Al-An'ami, here it's feminine. Again, here it's feminine. Allah changes mind, starts to correct himself because it's basically the same ayah. And writes it in the feminine form. So in chapter 23, ayah 21, he writes it in the feminine form and writes, Butuniha. Here he writes it as Butunihi. Here as Butuniha. Feminine. Al-An'ami. Butuniha. Feminine. So Allah, why are you creating disasters in chapter 16, ayah 66? Correcting yourself. In chapter 23, ayah 21. Wow. Allah cannot be God. Muslims, if you claim that Allah is perfect, he is God, can a perfect God can make mistakes in his perfect, uncreated Quran? Hmm. Well, you guys are understanding that <clears throat> he gave you two examples, Sabin, Sabiun, and here, where in one place it's gra grammatically wrong, in another place it's grammatically right. It's grammatically right. Quran, you'll have <clears throat> a word <clears throat> written in the wrong gender and the exactly. wrong declension, but in another place, it's written in the right gender and declension. Unbelievable! This is the, the this this is why Rob doesn't appreciate Allah. This is the beauty of the Quran, ya kafir, that Allah can make a mistake here and correct himself because He's above grammar. You kafir, ya kafir. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Okay, exactly, Sam. The, 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 the disaster is when you're going to claim that the Quran is the basic, it's the source of the Arabic language, the source of the Arabic grammar, then if you start with feminine or masculine, you have to continue with the same form. You start with feminine, you have to continue with feminine. So, words should be feminine, but are written in masculine form. If you start with feminine, continue with feminine. So, so that Rob or people like Rob cannot bust you and ask Allah to go back to Arabic school and retake their Arabic exams. Here Allah is failing. Muhammad is failing. Proving that we need to ask Allah to go back to school and retake their Arabic exams. Hey, you know what's amazing? Allah Akbar! <laughs> but, but here, listen, I'll tell you what's amazing. Guys, did you catch something? It's Surah 16, 66. 666. The 666 connected with the one, Allah. Tell me that's not a sign of the Antichrist. The one who is 666. Did you catch it? 1666. The one who's 666. Allah what bug? Anyway, two more. And then we're someone, someone in the chat, someone in the chat, this is funny, man. People are killing me. Someone is saying Rob is robbing Islam. Well, that's my job. Didn't I say in the early Beginning of our live show here. Did I say I love to rob Muslims out of outside of Islam? Amen. We rob Christians, you'll be okay, my brother. Yeah. The thing is, guys, guys, I want I want to say something really important. And I know that Sam said it many times, and we cannot say it often. You don't need me, guys. I'm replaceable. But if it's the plan of God for us to teach and Amen. expose the filth of Islam and expose Muhammad as a fake prophet. And by the way, prophet with an eye, right? He made Islam for his penis and his sexual desires. You ain't lying. 100% on the money. Which leads me to the three last questions. One of them is going to be about that. Three mm -hmm. last questions, guys, because this man has his own ministry <clears throat> and family. And we're going to bless him in Jesus' name. I'll put the link in the description box. Okay. Here's one from our brother Jai. By the way, Jai has a YouTube channel. He's also a precious young brother. I'm old enough to be his father. Well, grandfather, I'm old enough to be Rob's father. I'm getting old. But anyway, mm -hmm. also, Jai, encourage Jai. Go to his YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. I'll bring him on as well. Okay, here's his question. And just to give you the background. In Surat al Maryam, chapter 19, Rob, verses mm -hmm. 16 to 21. Chapter 19, verses 16 to 21. It says, Allah sent his spirit to Mary, who appeared as a man. And then he said, the spirit said, I'm only a messenger of your Lord to give you a faultless son. Now, so here's two things. He's asking. Can, can we can we start can we start with fifteen because we yes, need yes. to let me, expose. Let me this. remove yeah. his comment, mm -hmm. but just so I can mm -hmm. uh, help uh, people understand what Jai is asking. 
Mm. In chapter 19, verse 17, what is the true translation of the Arabic word? Once you unpack it, then I'll ask you a follow-up question because Muslims like to tap dance around this. Yeah. So you want to start 15? Read. Read 15 to 21. It's up to you. Yeah. Uh, here, 15, in context, this is about uh, uh, John the Baptist, who they call Yahya. I have no idea who Yahya is because we okay. Arabic-speaking Christians, guys, and he, 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 he are the Arabic-speaking Christians who are going to bust Muhammad, creating names for people. Uh, uh, I, I have no idea how he come up with the name. Anyway, we call him Yohanna al-Ma'abadan. Again, mm -hmm. Yohanna al-Ma'abadan. Do you remember Yohanna Butros? Shamun? Yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Bulis, Bulis. Bulis, Bulis. Bulis, Akbar. Yeah. yeah. So who, who Yahya is? I have no idea who Yahya is. He, his name, his true name, we call him Yohanna al Ma'amadan, John the Baptist. If you compare chapter 19, ayah 5, chapter 19, ayah 15, sorry, ayah 15 with chapter uh, 19, ayah 33, you will see it's basically the same ayah as 1933. 33. So if we read this, peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he's raised up alive. So this is talking about John the Baptist. Peace be upon him. The day he was born and the day he dies and the day he is raised up alive. If we go to chapter, the same chapter, Ayah 33, we can read that it, this one is about Isa, who they claim that is Jesus. Peace be upon me the day I was born and the day I die and the day I am raised up alive. Now, when we ask Muslims, when is this? Muslims will tell you that this is Isa, who they claim to be Jesus, from the cradle talking. Again, Jesus is a baby talking from the cradle. This is actually the same ayah, basically. Peace be upon me the day I was born and the day I die when I grow up and the day I am raised up alive. So here Jesus himself as a baby is confirming his birth and death on the cross and his resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Amen. a divine Amen. revelation, Amen. divine <laughs> intervention from the real God. Yep. Someone even had to ask that question, does it show that? Uh, so, so you answer that one. Now, mm. in chapter 19, verse 17, my brother, there. Mm. Does yeah. it say That's Allah said, his angel or his spirit? Because I have some questions about this. And we'll have one more question or two more and then we're done. <clears throat> it's 1917. No. Yes. Many translations say we sent unto Mary our angel Jibreel. No, okay. here, here, thanks to the Lord, I have Arbery in front of me. It says, then we sent unto her our spirit. It does not say Jibreel. It does not say Malak. It does not say Jibreel. It says, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحِنَا Again, رُوحِنَا Our spirit. So, here, the spirit is sent from Allah. Guys, pay attention. That's a little Arabic. And he can appear as a man, a perfect looking man, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now here's my question. Why is it Allah's spirit can appear as a man and enter creation, but Allah can't do so according to Muslims? Is the spirit greater than Allah, mightier than Allah? I think, I think Muhammad, but Muslims needed to change it much later. Muhammad actually believed. I truly believe that Muhammad believed that Allah did have a spirit. Much later, they have to change it because, you know, how can Allah have a spirit and he's Allah, he's one, right? That means uh, it sounds basically like uh, our Trinitarian God. So they needed to change it. But now it says clearly, guys, again, it says clearly in the Arabic, and we sent to her our spirit. So the spirit became a complete man a complete man not an angel there is the whole world angel the whole world angel is not there did you catch it yeah yeah i want people to understand allah's spirit can appear as a man in creation but they want to tell us allah can't appear as a man in creation Either that means Allah's spirit is greater than Allah, better than Allah, or their theology is wrong. So you saw that. That's the first question I wanted to answer. The second question I want you to answer is in verse 9. The spirit responds to Mary. And you're the Arabic expert, so they can't pull a fast one on you. In verse 19, the same surah. 
when Mary thinks this man wants to do something to her, how does he respond? He says, I'm only a messenger of your Lord. Does it say that the Spirit will give Mary the son who is faultless? He's the one who's going to give her a son? Which Sorry, which ayah? Which ayah? Ayah 19. Let's say you're the same surah. Uh, ayah 19. Mm -hmm. Okay, right there. Now, here's my question. This is what I'm asking. As you read the Arabic, confirm whether it's the Spirit who's saying, I'm a messenger of your Lord, to give you a son who is faultless. Meaning, does this prove the Spirit is the one who's going to get Mary pregnant miraculously, thereby creating life? It, uh, it says, uh, I am a messenger from your Lord. And after that, it says to give you a Gulaman, Gulaman Zakian, a so, pure boy, a, a holy boy, a pure holy boy. So, so he's, he's going to give her a pure holy boy. Who's going to give her this? The, the messenger. And that messenger is the spirit, right? Yes. The okay, same Rob, spirit. How many understand? If the messenger is the spirit, he gives her a son. By giving a son, does that mean he's the one who's going to create life in her womb? Yes, he, it's the same person. It's the same spirit who is doing the blowing. Chapter 66, ayah 12, as wow. we explained earlier. The same spirit who is doing the blowing inside the vagina. The same spirit who is sent by Allah. So it, clearly Allah has a spirit that he sends to give Maryam a pure boy, a holy boy. Because wow. Zakian means holy, holy holy boy without any sins and if we go to the hadith to make it even more worse for muhammad it says in the hadith and we can also put it on the screen I, I don't have it in front of me yet but i can look it up it yeah. says that satan did not touch oh yeah he did not touch jesus right that's what yeah. the hadith is saying that's in bukhari muslim yes yes uh okay i think i found it wow I'm, I'm yeah it's, it's in the tafsir of uh, chapter 3 of the quran verse 36 uh, it's, it's already on the screen Okay, so good. Already, good. Narrated Abu Huraira. Guys, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3286. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3286. Read with me. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, when any human being is born, watch, when any human being is born, Satan touch him at both sides of the body with his two fingers. Now he comes to meet. Except Jesus, the son of Mary whom Satan tried to touch, but failed, for he touched the placenta cover instead. Wait a second. Hmm. Muhammad is touched. Jesus is not touched. What does that make Jesus to Islam? Amen. This is the $1 million question. If Satan failed to touch Jesus, what does that make Jesus in Islam? Yeah. He's without sins, right? Yes. He's without sins. That means he's he's equal to God because God is without sins. Bam! There you go. In your face, booyah shaka. So let me just sum up what you just confirmed. Allah's spirit, not an angel, appears as a perfect man in creation. Allah's spirit creates life. He's a creator. And Jesus is pure and faultless. And Islam still wants to teach us tawheed. Ahad, ahad, wahid, wahid. What right? does Tawheed mean? Before we go there, brother, what does yeah, Tawheed mean? Yeah, what does Tawheed mean? The Arabic word Tawheed that they came up with, the oneness, Ahad of Allah. Tell us what it is, Rob. Come on, yeah. man. When I say in the Arabic, guys, pay attention, please. Take notes. Ana awahid. Let's say I'm an imam. I'm an imam or a priest, and I want to marry a man with his future wife, with his future wife. I'm going to say, and so far, listen carefully, so far I am, so far, a wahid, a rajul, ma al imra'a. What? Mm. So far, a wahid. Do you hear it? I'm going to unify. So, tawheed means unification. A wahid to unify. I'm going to unify as an imam the man with his wife, with, with, his, with, with, with his female. Part basic so to, to become one so fa a wahid tawheed a wahid tawheed tawheed means unification I unified and a wahid so wow. unification that's the actual meaning of tawheed it does not mean oneness Muslims where did you get 
the Amen. false translation for Tawheed from. Those games you cannot play with me. I am an Arabic speaker. It's not going to work. You hear that? Because he knows Arabic. We've been gifted with brothers like him. Glory to Jesus Christ. Now, Rob, two final questions. This guy keeps posting. Yeah, just, before, sorry, Go Sam, ahead. I know, you know, it, it may be too much for some people, but here's here comes the, the thing. Before Islam, guys, before Islam, even the pagans of Mecca, the, the family of Muhammad, the Quraysh of Mecca, do you know that they used to practice Tawheed, guys? I kid you not. The pagans of Mecca, they used to practice Tawheed. Muhammad stole the concept of Tawheed, which is unification from them. How is that so, Rob? Here is why. Watch. Let me put it on the screen, guys. I made a, a, a live show about this, uh, Brother Sam. Watch. Mecca before Islam. The Quraysh of Mecca already practiced Tawheed, i.e., as we explained to you, unification. The Quraysh worshipped Allah as the supreme moon idol. The Quraysh had intercessors. Al-Lad, Al-Uzza, Wal-Manat. The three bird idols, the three daughters of Allah. Now these three idols, they used to fly and they used to intercede the prayers of the Quraysh all the way to Allah. So they were birds. al al -ula. Remember the satanic yeah, yeah, yeah. The flying cranes. These are the exalted cranes, the high birds. Their intercession is hoped for. What did Muhammad do? He stole the unification, Tawheed. He stole the same Allah, but he only changed the intercessors. He yeah. removed Allah al -Uzza wa Manat, and he made himself an intercessor. He made the Quran an intercessor and he made the black stone an intercessor. So did Muhammad bring anything new? No, he only changed the intercessors. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. 100% on the money. Guys, you're going to have to rewatch this and re-rewatch this. You have my permission, upload it to your YouTube channels. Obviously, Rob, you can do that. That's This is mm -hmm. your session. And translate it for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, two final questions, Rob, because this guy keeps asking me this, and I have one to end it with. We're going to go out with a bang. Sure. One sure. question he ke I keep getting is, how does the eternal Quran violate Allah's unity? In other words, if the Quran is eternal, how can that be if Allah is one? Isn't that another problem? Exactly. I mean, uh, when we ask Muslims, is Allah uncreated? Is he eternal? They will say yes. When we ask Muslims the following question, is the Quran eternal? They will say yes. Is the Quran uncreated? Yes. And will the Quran intercede on the day of judgment? And will it have a mouth? And will it come as a pale man? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. intercede? Yes. So how is this not idolatry? How is this not paganism? Here we have Allah and here we have the Quran who are both uncreated and eternal. Wow. So guys, you understood what he's saying. The Quran is uncreated, but it's not Allah. And yet Allah is uncreated. That's two uncreated things. And the Quran will pray and intercede with Allah. Yeah, this religion really makes sense. And I not only that, Sam, as I said, he, the Quran will come as a pale man, as a complete white man. Remember? Why white? Why Don't confuse it. Because Muhammad was a racist. He didn't like uh, the color black, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the, even the Quran, Muslims have a, an issue. And Sam, here's the problem. They have an issue with Jesus as our eternal word, the eternal word of God, taking on a flesh, a, a, a perfect flesh body, coming into existence, right? You remember, Jesus is the eternal word that was with the Father, always existed with the Father, took on a flesh body, a perfect, sinless body. They have a problem with that, but they don't have a problem with the Quran. Take on a, <laughs> a, 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 sh a shape of a man, a pale man, to intercede for them, on behalf of the Muslims on the day of judgment. Where is where's the irony? You hypocrite Muslims, shame on you, shame on you. <laughs> Amen. By the way, this is how you know you're doing an excellent job. You're communicating at such a level. You make complicated things simple so that the people of God could understand by the grace of God's spirit. Sonia, Sonia, a precious sister in the Lord, Italian, we got it. Look, look what she said to sum up. 
She got it, Rob. God has blessed you to be an excellent speaker. May he perfect you for his glory. Allah has got a speech. He has got ruh, spirit. So they have got a trinity like us. Bingo! She exactly. got it. Praise exactly. Him for you, Rob, that he's blessed you with a brilliant mind. And to explain it clearly that even a sister who does not know Arabic got it. And then exactly. another brother got it. Sam T, you know what he said? Well, if the Quran is going to intercede for everyone, then the Quran must be omniscient because it must know everyone and what they have done. Bam, Sam T, you got it. Exactly. God bless. God bless your audience, man. They are really smart. No, it's thank you, thank you, thank you for for this amazing audience. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, it's also because the Lord Jesus has blessed you to explain it in a way where someone can get it, and that's the key to being a, a blessed teacher. Not only knowing this stuff, but knowing to, how to communicate it. So I'm gonna now. We're gonna end it with this on how filthy Muhammad is. Just, Here's just a second, uh, bro brother Sam. While we yeah. are at it, while yes. we are at it, if we go to chapter four, ayah 171, and I know you love this ayah, Sam. Oh, definitely I do. Please break that down. Four one seven. <laughs> Sonia, listen to this. Sonia, four, chapter four of the Quran, verse one seventy one. Please break it down for the sister because she's witnessing to a Muslim. It's gonna blow her away what the Quran says about Jesus. Okay. It says the following in the Arabic, guys. Pay attention. Inama. المسيح عيسى ابن مريم رسول الله وكلمته. Wait, guys, here's 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 the disaster. If we go to the translation, it says the following: the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, is now here. They are putting only. I will give any Muslim. Listen carefully, Muslims. I will give any Muslim. A thousand dollar if you can show me the word only in the Arabic. Do you yeah. see how they are adding? Yeah, Doing bid'ah. Guys, we should put a big red cross. I went to many translations actually. Any translation, put any translation. They are doing bid'ah. Well, this website is messed up. Uh, why did it? Just a second, guys. Let me go to the right. So any, any, uh, it says purely. Here it says purely. <laughs> only purely no it does not say that it says he is the messenger so isa guys jesus is a messenger one he is the word of allah kalimatuhu and ruhan minhu this sounds like the trinity brother Sam. 100 percent right? wow. like, uh, rob help those who don't know arabic when it says and his word the word of allah mm -hmm. sent down to mary yeah, minhu. So it the guys pay attention. This word that is Allah's words. This sounds like John 1:1. One, one. Yep. Muhammad simply copy it and give it a little twist to reconcile with the Christians, right? Remember, Muhammad was without an army, he needed to make friends with the Jews and the Christians. That's why. So he's the word of Allah, the eternal word of Allah, that he ca cast down Al-Qaha ila Mary, Maryam, wa ruh minhu, and, he, and a spirit from him. So do you see how Jesus, according to this very ayah, existed with Allah in Jannah and was cast down upon Maryam? Bam! This proves that yeah. Jesus is eternal. Did you guys catch it, Sonia? The Quran says Jesus was there as God's word, and he came down as a spirit to Mary to become flesh. Cast down. <laughs> Remember, guys, cast down. al meaning he cast it down. al here's the word. al So the word, the eternal word of Allah that was cast down upon Mary. Wow. wow, disaster, man. Disaster, Quran. Glory to Jesus Christ for, for raising up people to expose the Quran. Glory the name to above all names. The name above all names. Hallelujah. Now, let's end it by showing how sick Muhammad is. I read translations of the Quran, and Quran Muslims tell me this word doesn't mean what I've heard you say it means, as well as Christian prince. Is it true? Guys, listen to this, because we're going to go out exposing Muhammad, how filthy he is and how filthy his God is. And how filthy the Quran is. Is it true, my brother, mm -hmm. that in Arabic, the word and it appears in the Quran, nikah, yes, nikah, 
-hmm. because they translate it as marriage, you know, wedlock. Mm -hmm. Is it true, this word used in the Quran, for joining with a woman, nikah? Is mm -hmm. that a bad word? Would you use that when you're speaking to someone in Arabic about his daughter or... Yes. If I, I'm, I'm an Arabic speaker, a Christian from the Middle East. If I would have gone to a father who has a beautiful daughter, who happens to be a Muslim, and I would say, can I do nikah to your daughter? <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get at least a fist in, in my mouth. At least. So no, the word nikah, the word nikah is nothing but the effort. Muhammad is disgusting. Allah is disgusting for using the effort in his so-called divine book. <clears throat> wait, wait, Rob. So uh, let me get this straight. Uh, in the Quran, when this word nikah appears, where it says, and you can wed them, it actually is saying in Arabic, you can F them, F the woman in the Quran? Yes. F you them. Me. Yeah, let, let's, let me show you. Chapter 2, and this is another disaster that we can show and share with the audience. Man, you have an amazing audience, Sam. Tell them to yeah. subscribe to my YouTube channel, man. Yeah, no, guys, please. You love this brother? Subscribe to his channel because he is a gem. He is gold from Jesus for you guys. Come on, support this brother and support him as well as financially. I know we're not rich, man, but we trust the Lord. We need to support brothers like this. Now, he's going to show yes, Sonia. He's going to show you the Arabic word, nikah, in the Quran. So Allah, Muhammad's God, says to Muslims, you can nikah women. You can F women. Exactly. Now, before we are going to show you that, here is chapter 5, ayah 5. Again, guys, please take notes. Chapter 5, ayah 5. It says the following in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah 5. This day, the pure things are made lawful for you, halal for you, right? And the food of the people given the book. Who are those? The Jews and the Christians, right? The people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. Ahlul Kitab. Is lawful for you. So the food of the people of the book is lawful for you. Now, Sam, do you eat bacon with your eggs sometimes? Dude, I eat sausage, pizza, deep dish, baby. Brother, so do you see when Muslims say, you know, uh, bacon, uh, a pig, uh, meat is uh, haram, brother. But here Allah is saying it's halal. <laughs> because you can eat the food. It's halal. For you to, to eat the food of who? Of the people of the book. Bacon, ham, may Allah ham Muhammad. Anyway, uh, and the food of the people given to them for you. Yeah. And your food is lawful for them. So you Christians can also eat the food of the Muslims. And likewise are the virtuous Muslim women. And here, goes, here comes the meat. And the virtuous women from the people who receive the books. So, guys, guys, in chapter 9, ayah 30, chapter 9, ayah 30, Allah is saying that the Jews and the Christians are taking Uzair and Al-Masih, they have taken them as sons of Allah. May Allah destroy them, chapter yep. 9, ayah 30. So how, how are the mushrik women of the Christians and the Jews how are, they, how are they halal? Uh oh, we found a contradiction. Yep. Watch chapter 2, ayah 221. And do not marry polytheist women until they become Muslims. Now, here comes the meat. It does not say marry. Listen, listen. Thank you. Don't F. <laughs> Don't F. Do effing, sorry guys, sorry, to the mushrik women. But wait, you just said, you just said that the women of the Christians and the Jews are halal for the Muslim men. But if we go to chapter 9, guys, and I, you know, we need to do this. If we say something, we need to expose Muhammad for the 200%. Watch. 9, chapter 9, ayah 30. And the Jews said, Uzair is the son of Allah. And the Christians said, the Messiah is the son of Allah. They utter this from their own mouth. They speak like former disbelievers. May Allah kill them. 
What are we? We are mushrikun. Right. We are mushrikun because we take the Messiah as the son of Allah. But wait, how? How is Allah saying in chapter 5? Oh, why did I put it? Sorry, guys. Just a second. Anyway, let me go there anyway. Chapter 5, ayah 5. How is How are the Muslims allowed to marry women from the people of the book? Exactly. Isn't that a contradiction, Sam? Yeah, Isn't that a contradiction, guys? 100%, yeah, definitely. There you go. Now, can you read that Arabic word one more time where it says the wedlock? How does it go in Arabic? Sorry had to have you repeat it, but this is the Quran. I, what can we do? <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, but I, I, I really I really hate to 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 use that word because I know what it means in my Arabic language. Wala tankahu al mushrikati. Here, false translation. Do not F the idolatresses. The women who are mushrikeen, al-mushrikati, F word, don't F. Wow. You see, this is a beautiful religion. Now, remember, guys, why this is beautiful. Because before creation, this Quran existed eternally. It's uncreated. That means in eternity, guys, Sunny, everyone, pay attention. In eternity, this Quran that's eternal, uncreated, Allah is busy talking about Creatures who don't exist, and he's already telling them, here's who you can F. You F this, and you F that. Why in the world is Allah, because this is a speech, talking about Fing anyone using the F word in Arabic when he's supposed to be holy and pure? Because he's Satan, a filthy demon, if not Satan, the father of Muhammad. Glory to Jesus Christ. Now, Rob, let me bless you. Of all the people I've had, you brought in the most people. We have nearly 700 people who have been listening for over two hours. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you, guys. Now, that tells you the God Lord bless you. Jesus has blessed you and the Lord has favored you that when you come on, people want to hear you. This is the largest crowd I've gotten, about no 700, and they still don't want to leave. They still want to stay, but I have to go. Rob, I'm going to tell them again. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. The link, Jackie's been providing the link. <clears throat> watch his videos, hit the like button, and support this man, not just prayerfully, financially. I've said it. I'm going to say it again. There are a few people I want to see in full-time ministry. Osama Dakdok, definitely. He is in full-time ministry, Amen. but he doesn't have full funding. Another man that needs to be in full-time ministry is this man. But remember, being in ministry, if God has called you, you need to be supported to do the work for the glory of God. And how does God provide? Through his body. He has a beautiful family. He needs to make sure they're taken care of. So I would ask you to prayerfully consider where you can make sacrifices in your life where you cut out things you don't need so you have more money to support Rob Christian, Usama Dakdok, because these are the men that need to be fully funded, and I mean this, and I'm going to bring him back on very soon. And pray also for my YouTube channel, my ministry, my support, and my daughters. Rob, we love you, brother. Do you have any final words to say? Because you are amazing. And I mean that from my heart. You are an amazing blessing today. Any final words? Yes. Thank you for having me here, Brother Sam. Guys, please support our brother Sam. He's an amazing teacher. Guys, we can't say it enough. You don't need me. You don't need Sam. You don't need exactly. any anyone. We all need Jesus. I'm a filthy sinner. Mm -hmm. I need Jesus. But if it's the plan of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for us to teach, and for me to use this language that is forced on me, the Arabic language, to expose Muhammad and his fake God, who is no one else than Satan in disguise, Allah, then so be it. But you don't need us. But guys, please keep my family, keep my yes. newborn baby, my newborn son in your prayers. Amen. Keep my wife in your prayers. Keep all the enemies. Keep our brother Sam here and his ministry. And his lovely daughters. Yes, my daughter. Yeah. Pray for all the warriors, for all of them. Pray for Sister Hatun, who was yep. attacked in Speaker's Corner. We should not forget about her. Guys, support her because they broke her glasses. She needs new glasses. Support yes. this young Lion. lady, this lioness, yes. who is not afraid. I, I, to be honest, guys, compared to her, I, I'm a puppy. Compared Me to too. 
I'm a coward. She's a lion. I'm a coward. Exactly, guys. No, I'm a coward. Many people have asking me, why are you not showing your face? Now, here's why, guys, for the people who do not know. I have family in the Middle East. Right. Now, if I show my face, the Muslims there might know who, yes. who my family are. And that's the only reason why I'm not showing my face, guys. You know how peaceful Islam is, right? Yeah. You have seen what they did to Sister Hatun, right? That's what I was going to confirm. Just to confirm, Hatun's brothers were murdered because of Hatun's conversion. They Because the Muslim mentioned it, it was on her live stream. That's why I'm mentioning it. So this is why Rob Christian, Christian Prince don't show their faith. They're not afraid. It's because there are family members who are not involved in their ministry that will get killed. Now, thankfully for me, glory to Jesus, my family members are not in the Middle East. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Or I'd have to be, uh, I would have to hide my identity as well. But go ahead, brother. Finish your points. But it didn't mean and, uh, I just wanted to confirm. Yeah, I, I I want to thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be here with you, with all of you. You are our family in Christ. Thank you for your support. Please support all the warriors, David Wood, Dr. David Wood, who is doing an amazing job. All the warriors, Osama Dakduk, Sam Shamoun, Christian Prince. Don't forget about the legend, the living legend himself. Yeah, yeah he is. He is. Who, is, who, is our, who is our teacher. He is my teacher, to be honest yes, with us. Yes, he's he is. Yeah. He so, is. Keep us in your prayers and Amen. as long as our Lord and Savior give us the breath of life in our lungs and want us to teach, so be it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And brother, uh, I just want to say, David Wood, we want to support him, but he'll tell you he's fully supported. Guys, David Wood, he'll tell you he's fully supported. That's why I encourage you to support those who need full support. So the two people right now that need full support, Rob Christian, Usama Dakdok. And our sister Atun as well. She needs it. But glory to God, we, I was just told she raised up over $10,000. So these are the ones who are not fully supported. Dave will tell you, fully supported. Other people, fully supported. Osama's not. Rob is not. And Hatun, glory to God, I pray. Oh, Jay Smith, fully supported. It's not I'm saying. They're fully supported. Support those who haven't gotten full support yet because we need them around. And this man, definitely, we need him around. And I will bring him back, God willing. And so we love you, Rob, and we love you, the body of Jesus Christ. Learn this material, use it for the glory of Christ, and pray for us. Like we said, the Lord doesn't need us, but he's using us for his glory. May he be praised. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, we love you. Take Amen. care, guys. Thank you, guys. God bless.